to um, get a jet jet lag and all of that. And so it's fine. I just roll out of bed and get to connect with all you great people. So um, we've also got across the ditch uh, over in New Zealand in Wellington is Adrian. How are you, sir? Good morning, Grant. Not quite so uh, so early here, but um, <laughs> yeah, ready for day four. We had some very interesting guests yesterday. Uh, I think mm-hmm. Atlas lenses are probably going to stick in our memory for a long, long time. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you could go back and have a look at that. That was quite quite fun. Clearly, um, a very excited culture that they have there <laughs> and they had at the booth. It was quite the journey. I felt like we sort of got hijacked there for a moment, which was totally fine. We we pulled the car over at that booth and someone jumped in the driver's seat and took it for a spin for 10 minutes. Um, that's what it felt felt like. You know, uh, it's so, completely the NAB experience, isn't it? You walk to a booth it, and you don't really know what you're going to get. <laughs> Absolutely it is, yeah, and we'll have a bit more of that today. Um, also in LA is Robert Green. Hello, Robert. Hello and good morning, and uh, looking forward to another exciting day here. I'm on the odd even, odd scale of shows, one and three, so we'll see what show three brings us. I, I saw the lineup of the places we want to go, and I think we're going to have a very interesting time. Yeah, Absolutely. We've also got over in Seattle, Washington, a um, guy who's doing double duty. He's also looking after some pan tilt zoom cameras that we have at the booth. How's it going there, guy? It's going well, man. Looking at all these feeds and seeing all the action, it's definitely giving me some FOMO. And then seeing some of my friends get together for dinners, and that's part of the right. atmosphere that we're missing. I mean, we're trying to bring the show to you, but seeing uh, people giving hugs and stuff like that, it's it's awesome when you do meet people in real life at the show. So we can't we can't bring you the hugs, but we can let you know that connection is a big part of the show. Not just seeing all the cool gear, but we are going to see some cool gear, and hopefully you guys can ask, ask some questions that are really compelling and get these guys to open up. And I'm looking forward to today. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, we've got a couple of setups. Um, and so so we have a Live View. We thank Live View for their support of, uh, of making this happen for us. And so we get to go out into some different halls. Um, we've also got a VizLink, which is connected um, to back to our booth. And so that's a, a mobile camera. It's got a a screen on the front with, uh, unfortunately, our faces on it uh, that the vendors have to have to look at. Um, but that's the, a rig that gets a walk around. And then we've also got a little chair sitting at the booth. And so we're about um, about to have a little chat um, with Ordinate. Um, and we'll just finish off the panel super quickly. Um, over in um, in Tomsey, Norway, is Ronnie Hofsey. How are you, sir? Yeah, just fine. Uh, looking really, really looking forward to this uh, broadcast. And uh, even if I'm uh, on the other side of the Northern Hemisphere, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy being kind of in the uh, convention center. Uh, so uh, just uh, enjoying everything and, uh, you know, sucking it all in. Very nice. And then finally on our panel in Germany is Lucas. Hey, Ge- hey, hey, Germany. <laughs> hey, Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is giving me a Eurovision Song Contest vibes, if you say it like that. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm a little bit, uh, a few hundred kilometers na- uh, so- south of uh, Ronnie. And, uh, yeah, really looking forward to uh, especially hearing about Ordinate uh, because I have to say I'm a great Dante fan. So, yeah, really looking forward for that. Very good. Yeah, so we'll, we'll go to the booth now. Um and uh, and we've got Frank with us. Is that right, Frank from Ordinate? Can you hear us? Yes. Hi, I'm Frank Patakella from Ordinate. Hey, great to have you. Now, very quickly on the panel, raise your hand if you have Dante in your flow right now that you're using. Um, I've I've got Dante. Is is uh, is working through. Um, my microphone's going into an X32 um, with a Dante card and DVS running on my on my Mac Studio here. Um, we're huge fans uh, of Dante. Uh, tell us, tell us what's going on. You know, what's sort of new and what's what's current with Dante now? 
Yeah, I mean, I just want to start off by saying I'm also a huge fan of the Office Hours podcast, and I, I tune in. You know, uh, I like to do it right during uh, excruciating meetings because this is way more interesting stuff. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I love it. So I actually messaged Alex and I told him, "Yeah, this is a huge honor for me. I think I've made it now." Uh, so I'm a senior technical sales engineer at Audinate, and part of my job is to talk about the Audinate Dante platform. And uh, the cool things that we're doing at NAB is that. Uh, Dante Connect as a product, as a solution, has existed for the last year. It's a suite of products that we come together to basically enable cloud-based workflows. But I think we've made a, a lot of stride in terms of getting actual projects on the flow, uh, people who are interested in it, and also keeping with the Dante ecosystem conversation. I mean, as you raised your hands and talked about the different products that you have, no one Dante product needs to be the same. Dante is interoperable with Dante. That's the whole, you know, the crux of the whole conversation. So very similarly, we have have Dante Connect, and so uh, we've announced Dante SDK, the Connect Edition, which basically enables OEMs to build mixing platforms in the cloud using Dante Native or their audio sources. So now, uh, if you have a, a mixer, uh, you will have the ability to kind of build out the extension of that in the cloud. And uh, SSL has announced their solution, Calric has a solution, and Waves had it last year at NAB. So uh, we have quite a few products that are in the pipeline, uh, just enhancing on that cloud-based workflow. And we've also announced a partnership with Google. Uh, and, and continuing with that whole platform conversation, obviously, uh, Dante Director uh, was announced uh, as one of our solutions, which is a SaaS-based control platform for uh, Dante, along with, obviously, our video. So uh, we're quite, you know, we're growing into that uh, one-stop shop for solving all your uh, IP-based communication needs. Yeah, that's great. Um, for most of us that are familiar with, with Dante locally on a lo local network, you know, we're, we're used to the network manager and, um, you know, we, we put a bunch of devices on, we start, we see the network manager, we, we connect them up and away this we works. go. Take us, yeah, it, it, it works great. Um, take us kind of to that next step of, of cloud, like gi give us a, a, an example of how that's kind of working. We're talking multi-channel in, yep. in multi-environments, you know, how, how is that working? Yeah, so, uh, you know, when Dante first came out as an audio over IP platform, which we were fortunate enough to have a, a huge presence right now, uh, we were trying to simplify things. A network exists, you patch into Dante devices, go on to Dante controller, like you said, and do your patches, and things are supposed to just work. And that was literally one of our marketing taglines at the beginning, it, it just works. So we kind of took the same principle as we we're trying to do the cloud, because one of the challenges with the cloud, we do see varying levels of skill as far as the cloud platforms are concerned. We've been doing conversations at our booth, and most people are kind of in agreement that the next generation of broadcast live event engineers will also need to be, unfortunately, cloud engineers, or at least have some awareness of the cloud, which is the future of it. But we want to make it simple. If you've used Dante, we want to give you the same experience, and that's the principle. Uh, so a good project example that I can bring is we recently did a Tier 1 broadcast. It was our first Tier 1 broadcast using Dante Connect. Uh, it was an NHL game. Uh, AWS was the platform of choice, and basically they were able to, the game itself was produced in Washington, but the entire production crew, including the TDs, the A1s, the replay operators, everybody was located in Secaucus, New Jersey. And and so uh, all the audio was flowing up into the cloud from Washington, D.C. Uh, Secaucus was producing it and basically outputting it through their, uh, through their uh, content distribution network. So essentially, uh, uh, the, the, the highlight, and to simplify this whole conversation, is like the first time Dante Connect went live and the intercom folks were able to talk to each other between. So the camera operator was uh, doing a mic check with the A1 in, in New Jersey, and it was like, they were right there. So And they were like, are we really doing this was the first comment. And I said, yes, because you know, that's what Dante Connect can enable you to do. So I think it's quite simple in terms of the deployment. Obviously, the complexities of it lie on the technical deployment side, which is why we've partnered with a lot of strong partners who can give those solutions. And we are ourselves in that, you know, in that food chain. So that's where we stand. So, so from, a, from a practical point of view, we're, we're talking about actually kind of connecting to local networks together in a way so that you, you're, you're still doing the, the, the routing in the same way that we're familiar with it in a local way except that you're seeing kind of far end um, end points there as well and kind of being able to connect that. Correct. Is that the, 
Like, yep, yeah, exactly, exactly. So as far as somebody who's ever done a Dante controller patch is concerned, they're still patching. It's just that the device could be anywhere for that matter. And uh, just to give you a little bit of perspective on it, we've been able to send audio from Sydney to New York uh, or, or Vegas here at about 50 to 60 milliseconds of latency. Uh, usually on-prem to the cloud is like four to five milliseconds of latency. We regularly do London to New York for about four, at 40 to 50 milliseconds of latency. So very fast, uncompressed audio. Because the thing is, there is no transcoding. There's no format conversion that happens. It's basically still Dante wherever it is, which means your entire Dante ecosystem, whether it be something as simple as an AVO with two channels or a mix desk that has uh, 256 or 500 channels still applies to the same ecosystem. So it is, it's simple in, in, in the way we are kind of implementing it. Dante is Dante, you know, end to end. And so it's still, from a bandwidth allocation point of view, we're still kind of talking around a 5 meg um, Cor pipe, correct. is it, for each it, channel? It, yeah. Exactly. So uh, we, our four channels of audio would need about 6 megabits of bandwidth. Okay. A yeah. Dante flow. I mean, and the same principle applies in whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, we've got some questions, I think, that have come in. Courtney, what have we got there? Sure. Sorry, I had a car alarm going off. Audio problems, what do you think? <laughs> Robert Sabavity in Poland says, what is the best way to learn about Dante for audio? And on the same subject, uh, what is the best way for a newbie to introduce Dante into the production workflow? Excellent question. Uh, I guess the best, one of the things that Audinate has really done well, and I say this as somebody who's used Dante before I started working for them, and you would have had the same response from me prior to my Audinate paycheck, uh, is that they have very good training available for free. Uh, there's the Dante Level 1, 2, 3 certifications that's uh, on our website, getdante.com, and you know it's open to everyone. We have thousands and thousands of people who are certified every day. Uh, just go in and do the certification. That gives you a very good overview how to do things with Dante. And the next part of your question is, what is that entry level? If you're looking into moving into the world of IP, uh, networking is obviously a core skill. And you know, networking is networking. We don't have our own networking. It's still whatever it is. They use your vendors to learn that. But at the end of the day, there, we have various forms of hardware tools and software tools that you can convert your digital, uh, you know, your audio into the networked audio with AVOs, all the way up to software things like DV. Yes, uh, there's quite a few options out there. So start small, I and mean, it's easy to expand into whatever you want to do with Dante. Hmm. In New Zealand, Adrian's got a question there. Yeah, just just following up on the the learning side. Um, you know, I've got over 30 years background in IP networking, and the Ordinate training was some of the best laid out IP training that I've seen ever, to be honest. So yeah, just uh, Robert, go and pick that up. The level one, two, three certification is definitely something that you'd want to do. I'll make sure Great the training way. team hears that. They're, they're going to be very <laughs> happy to hear that. Yeah. It was excellent, yeah. Well, yes, and, and, and it was uh, for a long time was sort of in-person, lots of in-person training that was going on with, uh, with that Dante certification. And I, I guess like lots of things um, during the pandemic, we picked up more of being able to do that online too, is that right? Yep, that's true. We, st we have the online platform, but we're still doing the uh, in-person training. So one of the things that we do is we do have a mastery class, which is kind of like an advanced level uh, four-day workshop where people come in and you're actually configuring a network from scratch. We'll give you switches and audio equipment. And uh, it's typically done in Portland in the United States, but we do it globally. We're going to have our uh, newest one in, uh, in the EMEA region uh, pretty soon. So uh, just follow our website for notifications. Those things usually get you know filled up pretty fast because it's not a large class. We want to make sure that the quality is maintained, so we have that. But uh, people like myself, we're traveling all the time, and if anyone's interested in an in-person training, we are more than happy to come into your facility and give you like a lowdown of it and you know, kind of talk more about the expansiveness of the Dante Network. That's great. Um, uh, Lucas in Germany has a question. Yeah, just to follow up to the uh, learning and Dante Connect, is uh, uh, that something you ha have already uh, also in your um, in your certification, or is it is that coming? 
it, 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 so currently the way we do it is because it's not, uh, you know, uh, as widespread as the typical Dante applications and cloud is kind of a niche in terms of the deployment format. We do a personal training for that. So uh, people from my team will come in and we'll actually take you through the Dante Connect process. Obviously, there are some prerequisites we would expect you to understand like the AWS or whatever you know, cloud platform of choice you have an understanding of those things, but we basically give you the skills to be able to set up Dante in your environment, and so uh, it's a more personalized thing. We also have partners uh, who are integrators who are in that food chain as well. They're able to come in and kind of offer their services to kind of integrate solutions, because sometimes it's, it, oh, the one thing we do recognize is that the cloud is, the cloud, it is an expansive space, and we do not expect to be the only thing in there, so you'll have video and you'll have all kinds of functionality. So sometimes it's, it's important important to look at it from a holistic perspective. That's where integrators come in and they're able to, you know, give you that, uh, you know, that wholesome uh, everything kind of training solutions. But we are there for anything audio related and Dante Connect related. Hmm. That's great. Uh, next question. Next one comes in from um, Douglas Carmichael and he asks, would a unit like the Yamaha RUIO 16D be more performant and lower latency than DVS when connecting a digital audio workstation to the Dante network? Typically, hardware devices have uh, uh, more in terms of performance value, so uh, any hardware device would always be recommended over that. Uh, but DVS has its use cases as well. I mean, considering that uh, the software platforms, uh, the uh, operating systems, and the hardware devices that you know these softwares run on have grown significantly, we are seeing very strong performance on that side as well. But in terms of clocking, in terms of latency, uh, hardware devices are definitely uh, have the edge over the software solutions. Next question. Okay, and I might mention that DVS is Dante Virtual Sound Card, I think, so uh, right. their virtual connection <laughs> runs on Mac PC. Uh, Samuel Nordvik in Norway says, how does Dante integrate with 2110? And uh, can it be this be integrated with the Blackmagic 2110 products? I was expecting this question. Uh, so the, uh, in that journey of Dante being an audio over IP platform, we also recognize that there are customers who use other platforms like 2110, uh, AS67. Uh, so the way we integrate with 2110 is that we have Dante Domain Manager is our control and management platform. Uh, it is able to, uh, we're able to uh, create that interoperability with 2110 environments. Uh, there are some criteria for it. Obviously the devices need to be in an environment where uh, it is compatible with uh, the firmware 4.0 and above and able to become uh, a boundary clock leader and receive PTPV2 clocking. So some of those functionalities and features are manufacturer dependent. Dante as a technology can interrupt with it, but it also depends on the specific products that we're trying to integrate with it. So. I'm not entirely sure of the Blackmagic product, but it is something that we'll happily look into uh, if that is a use case. But yes, uh, but there are conditions to it. And you know, obviously, we are the resource. So if, when you, if you're trying to design a project like that, please reach out and we'll be happy to work with you on that. That's great. We'll take one more question from Robert there, Courtney. All right. From Los Angeles, California, Robert Shoji asks, what is an inexpensive piece of gear to purchase that would provide a good introduction to Dante? Uh, AVOs that automate. It is the only hardware that we actually manufacture ourselves. Uh, AVOs are a good entry point, uh, multiple channels, two channels of audio. And it, there's also a lot of work happening on the end. So, uh, you know, pay attention to our news. Uh, you may see more and more varieties of it. So there's a USB-C version of it. There's Bluetooth. Uh, essentially, you can bring in two channels of audio in, two channels out. Uh, if you go to our website, you can see the lineup of uh, AVO products, AVO adapters that are there are about yay big pretty small and convenient and can easily be an entry-level product into uh, a Dante environment. That's brilliant. Uh, Frank, it's go. been great to have you on the at the booth. Thank you um, so much. We've got to get you as a second hour sometime because uh, I'm sure we'll have lots more questions to die in, uh, dive into. So, Yeah, I love it. Love it. Thanks. I'd love to be back. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Now, for the first time today, we're going to get to a booth with Bill. I think we've got Condor Blue. 
We do. Grant, nice to be with everybody for the final day of NAB. I've always liked the final day. It's a little more relaxed and it's we get a chance to talk a little bit more. I am here at Condé Bro with Lucas, Lucas Colombo, who is the CEO of the company. And Lucas is going to tell you everything you need to know. Lucas, what are you showing sure Everything. I don't know how much time do we have because there's a lot. We've <laughs> launched a, a new bit. product every single day since last Monday. So there's a lot to talk about. But right here I can show you the highlights of the show, right? Uh, we're known for our cages and our camera rigs, our cables, but here we're showing off our new map box. We launched it actually on April Fool's as a tease and everyone thought it was fake. We made it look like an AI generated thing and then we announced that it was actually real and everyone lost themselves. So this is the new map box. We're showing off the indie kit right here. Uh, this is still a uh, prototype, so there's some 3D parts in here, like the, the, the actual hood itself. But the idea is we're all used to building out our cameras before a shoot and the map box has not really changed in so many years and, and personally I've owned over 15 map boxes and every shoot I have to pick a different one and it's not perfect for the shoot so we've built out the map box now the way we want to before. It starts out with all the pieces separately so it's modular you can put a bigger hood on there if you want for some of the bigger productions you can add as many tray stages as you want uh, so here we have a regular 4x5 standard trays and they have a lot of new safety things because for us it's all about the details. We use the stuff that we design uh, and that's what informs everything. So everything from uh, all the captive hardware, so you can't lose any of the hardware, all the way to just stages that uh, release and come in just like we're used to with standard airy style stages. We have a new system here where you can uh, release and catch this filter tray because most most ACs are having to put their hand underneath when they go to drop in the filter tray uh, now you can actually just flip this over I can't really do it with one hand but that would you'd be able to go in from the bottom to do that tray or going from the top a bunch of little features like the the magnetic uh, flag we got bubble levels it's all the stuff that we want to do is that we really needed as filmmakers and so that's the map box and a lot of people are excited about that again you build it as you need it's the only map box you should ever have to get from here on out and uh, just depends on the project everything from a big hollywood set to just running around the show getting some content um, and then the other thing that's actually generated a ton of buzz is our new battery plates so we have gold mount battery plates and v-mount battery plates and these are the pro versions that we've been working on for a while with USB-C PD on both sides. So that means you can have PD in and PD out. So this is the Canon R5C that we have here and that's getting fed PD into here. Of course, there's no battery on here so that you can see how this all looks, but that would feed the camera. And that's what this camera needs in order to perform, perform at 8K60 raw and its full maximum capacity. We've got uh, reversible D-taps, which you can see more on this. So it's the, the three pin, so you can switch the way your orientation is on the connectors. Of course, the DC's in there. We have an on-off switch that's kind of like a fighter jet style, so you can turn it all off. You don't have to take your battery off at the end of the day, and it won't drain your battery off. And one of the coolest things for me is just the, that the V-mount is actually latching and locks on. I've always been a gold mount guy because V-mounts just seem to bump right off the battery plates at the worst time, and your camera just goes out. This is a full metal aluminum body. And like everything else, it has a lifetime warranty. Everything we do, even our little cables, we do tons of cables. I'm sure everyone's known, known our SDIs and our HDMIs, and we back them with lifetime warranty. Same thing with these, but you cannot get that battery to bump off. It's impossible. So we finally fixed the V-mount situation in the industry, which is great. And there's just so hey, much more. So hey, I don't know how much time you want. Have yeah. you, got, can, you can hear me? Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hey, can hear um, you. Um, I'm Grant from Adelaide, South Australia. I um, hey, thanks for showing showing that stuff. This is super cool. Just just on the battery mount, you talked about the PD being two way. Does that mean yeah. that you can kind of hot swap batteries uh, if you were to plug in a in power delivery into that? Uh, could, yeah. Would that continue to power the camera and everything while you swap a battery out? Exactly, exactly. So if you're, say you have PD going out into your camera, so that's powering your camera, and then you go PD from the wall, let's say you go for into the mains, you could use your MacBook charger or anything that gives you a proper PD, and in, now you're not only charging this battery, if it was dead, you're charging the battery, but it's also giving power to the whole rest of the rig. And that means you can take the battery off, it's still going, get another battery, put it back on. So yeah, that's that's one of the advantages. There's plenty more advantages with PD, but that's one of the things that we're going after with that. That's super cool. Very cool. Uh, I think we've got a question from Courtney in Hollywood. Right. 
Yeah, hi. Thanks for the demos. Uh, a question about the Matbox. As a manufacturer of teleprompting equipment, occasionally we're asked to mount a teleprompter on a on a uh, cinema lens that has a, a big uh, four by mat, mat box on it. Is the eyebrow easily removable, that fold down protective eyebrow? Because a lot of times on uh, Panavision, you know, I had some problems. It's not so easy to take it off. Is yours easily removable in case you want to uh, have a teleprompter and move it pretty close to that mat box and leave it in there for handling, keeping yeah. the filters in, but putting a prompter in front? Yeah, I mean, you tell me. How fast Gee, that is that? That seemed pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> a lot easier it's in there. than the ones in <laughs> Yeah, we have we have the two knobs and we again it's the details. We put rubber pieces here so that you're not burning out your fingerprints as you're twisting these knurled knobs. So there's these O-rings that protect that, so it's just easier and it's actually uh, easier to tighten as well. But yeah, those two knobs that goes off. That also helps to uh, go with a more lightweight rig if you want to get rid of some of the weight. And actually, if you do that, it, this becomes the lightest matte box in the industry as soon as you take off this. Because this, this has got metal machined aluminum parts so that you can mount things like cine tape or other, other products on there. These days, a lot of people are mounting even action cameras to get BTS right off the top. So yeah, we're, we're trying to think of everything in terms of how I've used it. Because I've, I've been a cinematographer and, and producer and director for over 15 years. So I've been doing so many different projects from multi-million dollar narrative stuff to, you know, commercials next door, local commercials. So there's never been a map box that can do all of that. And so that's what the, the aim is with this. You can build it out how you want. Thanks. I really love yeah. that uh, you talk about the captive hardware. Um, I, I guess it was just a hundred times that you dropped one of those things in the dirt and can't find it again. And then it's like, <laughs> yeah. how do I get that thing back? But it's actually, it's a whole nother step to, to not just get frustrated by that, but to actually go ahead and produce something that solves that problem, right? Yeah, I mean, and that was, that was very uh, specific for us because just recently I was, I was uh, DPing a film out in California like three months ago and we were using the Airy LMB map box, which is kind of the standard in rental houses, everybody has them. They're like $2,000 plus map box. And one of my ACs, it's not his fault, um, but they lost the, the screw that holds the filter in. Mm -hmm. That screw is probably a $2 screw, but now the $2,000 map box is useless because now I cannot put any trays. We couldn't use it. We literally threw it out. We tried to find a different way to, to put our filters on there because of a little tiny screw that fell out, maybe in the car even with the vibrations as you're transporting from one location to another. So it's, it's all that stuff. We don't, that's, that's the stuff I've had frustrations with, and so we're uh, making sure that doesn't happen anymore. You fixed it. That's cool. And thanks uh, for noticing. In <laughs> over in Seattle, we've got Guy with a question. Yeah, what's been the most popular uh, Condor Blue uh, item that's mo moving or selling, and then are we missing it on our rig? What, if you look at our rig that we're shooting you with right now, what Condor Blue accessory are we missing? Uh, you don't want me to roast you on that right now. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, we, we could, uh, you guys should stop by our California HQ so we can get you a whole new rig. Right now I'm seeing a whole lot of... Um, cast and molded aluminum parts with the things that would break that has no lifetime warranty that are from foreign countries and you know everyone has to start somewhere that's fine I, I have a whole I have a whole drawer full of that stuff from my early days um, no but it's good everyone it's I'm glad that there's you know solutions out there for everybody we're gonna be at a more premium cost because we're gonna deliver the more premium experience whether it's in fact it's a lifetime warranty the fact that everything is machined out of aluminum instead of uh, cast and allows for little air bubbles and things to actually break. The fact that we have customer support that are filmmakers and there's no ro robots or no AI chats or anything. You call us, you text us, you. All of that is is the experience that I wanted from brands when I was around shopping around, and so we made sure that that was the thing. But there's a lot of things we could do for your rig, and I'm happy to help out. Awesome, I'm sure you are, Lucas. We'll leave it there. Thank you so much for your time. It's awesome to see the products. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Cheers. All right, we're going to move off uh, to our live view link now, uh, and we should have Alex down at Nanlite. Thanks, Grant. It's uh, so good to be here. Um, and I'm here at Nanlite, and I'm here with Barry Garcia from Nanlite. And um, just so you know, like my home rig is actually Nanlite, so it's so that's well, we convenient. We always like to hear that, Alex. That's really cool. It so. is. It is. And so, and and we have. I've, we probably bought. 
I don't know, 50 to 100 lights from Nanlite yeah. of all kinds of different sizes. And so we've been really, really happy with them. Cool. Um, and I That's hear. That's great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> so I hear that you have a couple new releases this uh, for NAB. So yes, what, what, we, we dropped some new stuff. So if you guys want to follow me and let's go yeah, over yeah. and have a look at what we got. So um, the nice thing about uh, what we did was we were kind of looking to add to our FC line, which we had the FC 500B and the 300B out for a while. And it's been a really successful line for us because it's a little bit better as far as um, your, your overall brightness and stuff like that. And it's cost conscious. So what we did was we added a couple of new fixtures to that. We ordered a, go ahead, Alex. We had a 60B as well as a 120B. And both of those really and truly allowed us to, to kind of get into that market uh, and have something that is very cost conscious, but also what Nanlite's known for, a bright light, good color quality, as well as all the bells and whistles that you would expect. And what are the prices for these? So this guy right here, you're probably looking around uh, less than uh, $200, and this guy is less than $300. That's fantastic. I know, right? We're, we're really excited. So let me tell you a little bit about the next step up from that. So right above your head, right back here, Alex, we actually have the FC500C. The FC500C is uh, one of our first larger mono lights that's actually a full color fixture. RGBWW has all the bells and whistles, HSI, uh, or your RGBW creation color. You can do Lee gels. It has all those things inside of it, and it's a full Bowens mount. So that allows you to be able to plug that light up and use all those different Bowens modifiers that we have, as well as other people have. And how do you, what is the remote control options for this? So the remote control options is something new we've just done. These guys have been mainly the FC line uh, and AC power only. But what we've come out with is a brand new fix piece that actually is an adapter that allows you to be able to have a battery solution. And that remote control that we have there actually puts the controls down here so they're a little easier to get to on the stand sometimes. But it also allows you to add two V-mount batteries, whether 26 volt or 14.8 volt, and get good run times out of those if you're going to do that. So I wanted to go real quick, since we're over on this side, I wanted to talk to you about uh, a 10 degree spot that we came out for this. Uh, this pretty. is something new. Um, we're very excited about it because you know we've had the 19 degree and the 36 degree for a while. This thing is crazy bright and it right. works really well with Where our people 60. people use this in the industry? So I would say a lot of times when it comes to projection mount and this type of stuff, we know that's, you know, from, from when we've gone to see this plays really and like, things like that. Know, throwing something up on the, on yeah, the wall, you know, possibly logos, but also yes, specs, those yes. types of things. Or it's, you know, you get stuck in one of those rooms in a hotel and you're trying to make it look good, so yeah. you need a breakup pattern on the wall. Yep. That's where something like this really comes in and helps people. And how it much really, does this cost? So something like on the, the, the 10 degree with the actual piece will probably be around $399. And then you're adding the light for, let's say, five ninety nine. So, I mean, you've got a good deal there for right, right around $1,000. So, that's I fantastic. mean, that's that's what people are needing, especially the smaller, more portable running gun solutions. And are these, and these are still, these are, again, any kind of remote control for yes. these ones? Yes. So, with all these guys, Bluetooth is included. So, you know, you put that app on your on your phone or your iPad, and right. you're able to do what you want to do. Right. And and which where do they kind of switch over to DMX? So... All of these guys actually have DMX on them. It just takes a small little adapter. Oh, got now, it. Now, you can do a, a, what we call a hardwired DMS, DMX. Yep. So you're plugging the adapter into the light. You've got a 5 Where's pin, the adapter? And, and yeah, this is actually the little, eighth, the little, it's like a little bitty, eighth inch. Yeah, eighth inch on the back of there actually allows for that to be able to plug that adapter in, screw it down so it's secure, yep. and then plug up your cables. And so that's just a, so, and all of these cameras have that. Yes, sir. All of these, all these lights right here that you see have that ability to be able to and do that. And what can you address with the DMX? So with the DMX, you can do a lot of different things. Now, when it comes to full color, we'll use that as our example. Right. Full color is, you know, you've got the ability to change those different colors. And right. changing that on the fly, helpful for oh, whatever huge. type of vent you might be trying. Absolutely. But let's say, for instance, I want to add a, like a, a little higher CCT color temperature. Having that ability to do that on a DMX is very helpful, whatever you might be doing, whatever Absolutely. you're shooting. So, Absolutely. But this is really the thing that, I mean, having not just the local control, but remote control is, yeah. is very exciting for that. Absolutely. The last slide I want to mention real quick, and then we'll move over to some new panels, yep. is the FS300C. This light's going to be really good, under $500. It's one of those, again, RGBWW, plug straight in, but it's a light that I think a lot of our photographer friends are really going to love as well right. because it has the ability for a full RGBWW engine, same things as the 500, but just in a little little less brightness. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So let's take a look at the Pabu Slims we have right over here. 
So you were telling me you like a lot of the uh, um, the, the, the different NAN lights. And yeah, you know, and we're using over in the uh, over in our booth. We have a couple of these the, the 60s here. The Slims, right? Yeah, yeah. we have the Slims. And, Slims and have so, become really popular for us. What I love about them is what we did is we actually uh, used these quarter 20s yeah. to put a couple of them together. Exactly, right? You know, put right? some cheese plates behind them and just, and, and just hook them together. That and versatility it's really of being able to use for the different And lights. the fact that they're so light. Yes. You know, so that all the weight is over here, yep. and we're able to now put these in a much, you know, have a lot of other places to put them. It's been really, really good for us. And it's the output that you're getting on that, too. So bright, even yeah. through the softbox. Absolutely. That's what we and like about it. And it's it. nice that the softbox is kind of just built in with it. It just pops open. It's really, really yeah. works well. I agree. I totally agree. So what we did is we came out with two new, basically three new sizes. We'll just call it that. So we'll start with the big guy here, right here, above our heads. That's the Pavo Slim 240B and 240C. So this guy, again, all of our other Pavo Slims come in a B version, which is strictly bicolor, but they also come in the C version, which is the RGBWW, and allows you to have a lot of the same feature sets that we saw on the lights we were just speaking about, but you've got the red, green, blue, added to your large CCT range, so you really have a lot of options when it comes to that. And a lot of times when we're doing interviews, we want to get this big, wide space. Exactly, right. But, but rigging them up in, in a location and then having to have the support structures to put something really big together becomes a real challenge. Well, that's what I was going to say, the weight, right, the sometimes. Weight, the weight yes. on the floor is fine. Weight on the floor, right? <laughs> you know, but the weight, weight up here is not fine. You know, yes, like so, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So that, that makes it always fun. So, I mean, we, we came up with some bigger sizes. We also came up with a little bit smaller size, just jumping to this other guy. So it's a two by half is what right. we call it. Um, we're kind of thinking some of the podcasting guys are going to like this because, yep. again, has that smaller form factor. Get it into those places that you really need to be able to make it work for you. Yeah, yeah. But again, the weight's offloaded down below and they can control what they want. Absolutely. Either in the bicolor or the full color. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. So behind you, as we move down the wall here, we're moving to a sort of a, an assortment of the sizes that we have, but I wanted to show you the big guy that they came out with. So this is the four by one. This is the big gun right now that we'll have. We see a lot of studio type setups for this. This yep. is definitely be something that you're going to get it up in the air and you're going to set it. Yep. And it has all the bells and whistles as far as a full again, the full color RGBWW or as a bicolor fixture too. Yeah, and again, nice and light. Yes, sir. So, Easy so to, get, able up to there. get it up there. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Yeah, that's definitely something. And like I said, we, we really expect to see a lot more of those type of things in a studio type setting. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Lastly, I want to tell you about the thing I'm really excited about. Now, this, this guy, you guys are going to like this. This is probably one of the brightest lights, these two guys yep. right here, uh, that we are coming out with. Literally dropped them two days ago. Wow. Uh, this is the Alien. And here's the reason. We call it an alien because of the back of, the, of what it looks like. It looks wow. sort of like an alien on the back of it. Yep. The two eyes from the fans. So it allows it to be uh, a little different in, in its look and feel. The other thing that's really cool about it is this is an IP55 rated head. So it can get wet. Uh, we can have it out in the weather yep. and be able to use it. And then it has a long cord down to a control system. The control system actually has a cover that allows you to be able to cover it up. So if you are in the weather, you can control the cover. Or the cover can be over the control system and just make it easy on you as far as not getting wet. Uh, but we also have a long cord so you can take and offset the control system so you have the ability to have the light up high and yep. this is over and away from it. This light is extremely bright. It comes with a soft box that you see. Um, has a lot of the bells and whistles that the RGBWW has, but it also has some of the higher end, what we call some of the Nanlux um, feature sets. And what's the difference between Nanlux and Nanlux? That's a good Nanlux. question. I, I get that a lot. So Nanlux and Nanlite are brother and sister. We basically are uh, the same, come from the same factory. All of our lights match. So if you bought a Nanlux or you're renting a Nanlux and you have Nanlite, they'll look just fine together. Uh, very, very particular about how we do LEDs and our color systems. So that's right. very important to us. But the Nanlux handles mostly the higher end Hollywood style lighting, yep. starting at about 900 watts and going up to 2400 watts. Got it. And, and we've been really happy with those. I've used those in a bunch of events. Oh, I know. I know. Where they're we're doing great. big interviews and, and yes. they just, they're like the sun. Yeah. So, if you need yeah. to light a city block, Nanlux got you covered. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, <laughs> absolutely. But these guys right here, the 300 and the 150, brand new products for us. We're very, very excited about them. Especially especially all the different types of modes that you've got in there. Again, RGB, HSI, you've got an X and Y coordinates so you can actually take a measurement from like a seconic meter right. and be able to say, I'm gonna to wanna to match this light perfectly. This light will allow you to do that. As and, well and as- how much does this cost? Okay, so for these guys, you're probably looking at about $14.99 for this fixture right. and $9.99 for the 150. 
Right. So that allows you really and truly a lot of latitude. But uh, I think we should show you guys just how bright <laughs> these get. So I think that's probably fair. And let me see real quick if I can just, there we go. Okay, we're at that. And all right, everybody hold your horses. Here we go. So that's about 25%. <laughs> it burns. Going up it to 50. Burns. Yeah, now I'm actually needing to step back a little bit myself. Wow. Uh, yeah, so that's that's right at 100. So we're, we're blasting all the way across the aisle into that's amazing. those guys. We're going to drop that down so you guys don't get blinded. But that's the great thing about it. I mean, we're always having people say, well, I just need a brighter light. I can yeah. always turn it down. So right. that's what we're doing with these new aliens. That's fantastic. And now what's this big one up here? Okay, so behind us, we actually have, these are the Nanlux lights. Right. Nanlux dinos. Now, now, the dino's been out for a while, but it is a soft light that really gives you the output that you're looking for in a full RGBWW yep. type look. And these are the ones that we've actually used in the past for You guys have used those events. before. Okay. Yeah, so we have, we'll have a, we'll have like five people for an interview. Yes. And we'll have a couple, you know, a couple of these on either side to get nice, big, soft light, you know, and it just, it's just all a nice even. pool of it's light, a, right? Yeah, big yeah. pool of light. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's been really successful for us. Like I said, Nanlux and Nanlite together are really and truly a great solution for any type of lighting need that you need. I right. mean, that's that's one of the things they do very well of basically solving those lighting problems is what I like to call it. And I'm just pulling up to see if you have, sure, if you have any all. questions here. Uh, uh, Dave Troutman in Edmonton, uh, Canada said, asks, I'm curious about being able to change the diffusion levels. Okay. Uh, can these ha use different diffusion boxes? So you could use different diffusion boxes, and this is a good question, Dave. Uh, the, the diffusion boxes that come with them actually have a full stop diffuser as well as a half stop diffuser. Right. Um, they've got quite a few accessories, we'll call them accessories and modifiers, in mind for these guys. So I'm kind of curious to see what they come out with since they just dropped the lights. I right. think there's some new plans for also for us kind of playing with some of the other guys in the industry. So maybe there'll be some other options for modifiers. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yes. And and I put a lot of these, I have, you know, the nanolines I have at home for my little home studio, yeah. uh, you know, I, I put a big frame and then I put them, I back them away and they're plenty bright and I, they just fill that frame. It's like oh. a three by five frame, you know, as you do in your home sure, office. Sure, Well, yeah, <laughs> so, as you light yourself up for everything you have to do, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I do the same thing. My wife always thinks it's funny because uh, our living room becomes basically a small studio whenever I have to do things like that. So yeah, absolutely. she's like, wow, okay. <laughs> what other Nanlux st stuff do you have so over here? So for some of the Nanlux pieces, I can tell you a couple of new things things that Nanlux dropped. Um, one of the exciting things is right here on the 2400. Now the 2400 has become um, a lot of the go-to lights with the rental houses for us. Right. Uh, it's been really and truly um, the fixture that everybody wants. It's working on multiple, multiple shows right. as well as anything else that people need. Well, so one of the things they wanted to do was have a new type of Fresnel. So they have a motorized Fresnel now that actually has a motor on it. Let me see if I can spin it around so everybody can see. So right here, it just fits. Before, on our previous 1200B, as well as some of the other ones, we've had to change the yoke and move it to the actual Fresnel. Now, this we don't have to. On the 24s, the size and shape of it allow us just to put the Fresnel on the front. So this new Fresnel, actually, like I said, is motorized. Wow. So you can actually dial in what you're looking for on right. this guy and then know what you're working at. The other thing is it actually could be controlled by DMX as well. So plugging in a DMX system and then... And, 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 this, and that dial that yes, dials sir. DMX That'll control. That'll dial DMX, via DMX. We had it working with Blackout yesterday. Worked really good for that. Right. Um, or if you have, in case anybody asks this question, we probably will get that. Um, we can actually take the motor off and just turn it into a standard if that's something that you need to do as well. So uh -huh. there are ways around making it work for you wherever you're doing. Absolutely. Uh, Lu Lucas Her Herzog in Mans, G Germany... Um, asks, uh, on the alien lights, what's the smallest increment you can dim to? So there are point lights. So 0 0.1 would be the smallest oh. you could possibly go. Uh, for those type of lights, they're always going to be uh, like a 5.2. The, that point percentage is always something they want to do because they really want to have you have those in-betweens when it comes to dimming. No, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and do you have anything else that we haven't seen So yet? the last thing I can possibly mention to you guys that is coming out, we know correct um, here in the, the the near future, we'll call it that, mm -hmm. um, is a new uh, projection mount that will work on the Evoke 900C as the Evoke 1200B. Um, this guy is going to fit on the front. It's an actual rotating barrel that is a 15 to 30 lens. So you can be able to move it back and forth. 
as well as have um, the characteristics you would normally have with like a Leco or a right. Source 4. Yep. So they're excited about this, and this is something I, I just saw it the other day, so I, I literally haven't had much time to play with it yet, but it, it really is going to be an interesting setup for them. Now, I know that the rig isn't he, here isn't, uh, that that gray rig isn't yours. No, that's but it's cool. Tilta. It's very cool. Well, it's well, something can we that, look at it? <laughs> that they're working towards right now with Tilta, and um, I don't have a huge amount of information on it, but I know it's <laughs> DMXable as well as it is an automated rig that you're going to be able to program. That's uh, it has a remote control that looks kind of like a, oh, it's right here. Hang on one second, gentlemen. I'll grab that for you. It has a, a remote that actually allows you to be able to adjust and move around. Now, you can set it on a preset setup, or you can actually control it yourself via the trigger mechanism and being able to move it. So I, I don't, I'm not doing much with it because I think it's on a preset loop. Right. It's fantastic. Trade shows. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, a lot of cool things coming from us. Uh, and from Nanlux, yeah. uh, that really allow you to, to to make your life much easier when it comes to lighting. Mary, thank you so much for your time. Hey, I, I, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me on today, Alex. I yeah, appreciate yeah. it. R really great. We love Nanlux, and back to you, Grant. Hey, Alex, I just wanted to test because we like just throwing a curveball in there. Can you can you hear me still, Alex? I see. I was giving him a second. I think he can hear me. Okay, that's all right. No problems. Okay, I was just throwing a little curveball. What was the question? What's, what's oh, okay. the question, Grant? Go ahead, Grant. I, I just had the No, no, no. I did. Okay, no worries. Uh, that's okay. Um, we're, we're finished with Nanlight. That was awesome. I really liked it. But I was just interested in your thoughts, um, just some general thoughts on what you've seen moving from booth to booth. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, the – and uh, we're uh, – yeah. You're doing yeah, yeah, we're doing housekeeping. Yeah, that's okay. That's right. Yeah, so, back to you. Then. Thank, you don't need me thank you so much, Barry. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so, sorry. The, the, no, no, it's all good. It's, it, so the um, yeah, no, the uh, um, you know, it's been it's been really exciting. I have to admit, we've been working so much on the booth that I have not seen as much yeah. as I'd like to see. Um, I've mostly been going, you know, our uh, question system has been being used in a couple of different places, so I've been running around supporting that, um, as well as uh, as well as the, you know, I get to wander around a little bit. I mean, the big thing is people talking about AI, of course, um, but we also are, you know, like there's a lot of creator tools here. And so you're starting to see a lot of things that are, and a lot of these companies um, like Small Rig, like Tilta, like, like, uh, um, these other ones are, they were like little booths years ago, and now they're massive. You know, these are massive mm -hmm. um, locations. Ceremonic, that's right across from us here, they were a little rig, and now they're really, you know, they're, uh, it, you know, the stuff in the, the form, the fit, the fit and finish has gotten much, much better. Nanlite, five years ago, or four years ago when I started using them, you know, it was good stuff, but it wasn't, it wasn't this incredible, like, it wasn't nearly as strong and, and durable as what we're seeing now. You know, so we're seeing a lot of these um, companies really evolve. Um, we're also just seeing a ton of LED walls. <laughs> they're everywhere, you know, and they're getting so much better. You know, a lot of these are, you know, a lot of these, um, a lot of these have been a challenge uh, because the, um, uh, you know, LED walls, the pitch was like 2.3, 2.6, 3.2, and that caused a lot of moray. And now we're seeing those prices go down and we're starting to see the 1.5s, the ones, the 0.9 uh, mil uh, screens, and they just when you walk around and see them, it just makes a huge difference, you know. And, and it really looks nice. So we're seeing a lot of LEDs. They have a they have a container over on the other side that literally just pops out a big LED screen. It's like a it's like a shipping container that has a giant LED screen that I feel like I really need for my house. I think that would be good. <laughs> so anyway, so that. <laughs> Yeah, two of them, <laughs> stereo, you know, like, you know, and, and I could put it in the hill. Like if I, I think that if I put it on one side of the hill where I live, the, my neighbors on the other side would, would have a, a, a perfect experience of a movie. So that's, that's my big plan. So that's what I've gotten mm -hmm. out of this so far. That's very cool. Um, could we just pan around a little bit? Can you point out a couple of things that you're seeing? We've missed kind of yeah. the in-between things. and uh, Yeah, yeah, cool yeah. We, we, we almost did that it? yesterday, and we didn't quite get to it. But the, um, you know, so, you know, as you, as you kind of walk through here, um, here you can see some of the LED stuff that, that we were talking about here. Um, you know, it's, it's a pretty, um, uh, you know, as you, as you go through here, there's, 
you know, we didn't get to walk around as much. We've been kind of just jumping from one thing to the next. Um, but, yeah. and, and I, I don't know if I'm quite in the right space to show you more, but, um, but you see, like, here's a satellite truck here. There's, you know, they, they, this all used to be in between the north, the, the, the south hall and the central hall. And now a lot of this truck work has all come in um, and, and are part of, the, part of the event, which is nice. It's a lot nicer because the sun just killed you. You'd be out there walking, and by the time you looked at all the trucks, you had a sunburn. So, which, you know, so um, Sony, of course, is, is massive. One interesting thing, I, I talked to Sony. I was really excited about the LR1, and it, it's just not the mission. Excuse me. Webcam, webcam is not the mission for the LR1. So that's what we did get from Sony. <laughs> They're like, it's a still camera. Okay. It'll kind of do video, but it's really like, we were really excited about it, but it, so it's really the other cameras are, the ones we're using now are the ones to use for webcams. You know, the, um, they, they were kind of amazed when I said, oh, I got an FX30, that's my webcam. And they are like, that's your webcam? <laughs> so, so the, <laughs> um, so that was a little bit of a, I don't know if they, I don't know they, if they were their, uh... impressed or if they were horrified. What were you gonna say? Did they bring their crystal LED display? That fantastic eight. They did not display. It's it's oh, it's really no. quiet. I was kind of surprised. I, I haven't seen it here since COVID, so it was just the most amazing LED ever. So um, so anyway, so so I, that's um, it's been it's been good. Yeah. So hopefully we'll, it's it's been a great show. Um, again, I've seen very little outside of about a couple feet here and there in in. Uh, um, uh, here and, and and we have. I'm gonna pull someone on because we have a doctor here. Oh, How great. are you doing, sir? I'm good, and you? I'm so pleased to see you in person. Yeah, absolutely. I'm Doctor NDI. <laughs> doctor NDI. So Doctor <laughs> NDI is here. Hi. Uh, we we will see if we have any NDI questions. What now? What have you seen in the show that you're excited about? Oh, uh, so first of all, the adoption in NDI. I mean, we yeah. last year there was. I'm going to pull partners. your mic up just a little oh, closer there. Yeah. Last year there was, if I remember well, 20 partners. Now we see 50. Yeah. Big, yeah. big. And then, of course, 10-bit HDR. So excited. Big stuff. I'm so excited about 10-bit uh, HDR. Yeah. And uh, NDI for embedded device is really changing, you know, the, the yeah. perception of NDI. is not, not more only uh, video over IP. It's something bigger. Yeah. No, and then there are amazing products around. I mean, yeah, amazing new product supporting NDI. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're really excited. We're you know we're just getting into vector. We're really excited to start tying all those things together. Yeah. And um, and I'm I was so excited to find out that and that that you had it. We're going to be starting to do some HDR tests. Yeah. Um, almost immediately. Now, anything else at the show that caught your eye? So, well, of course, the announcement from Ross. Right. Is quite big. There is an and which announcement was the what was the one that you're that you're the most excited about? Um, not not easy to say. Probably Ross. There's another small product that made me really amazed. It's just there. I was I was there. BLT. This is a company in Italy who develop Insta Replay. Sorry. And they develop Insta Replay system. Oh yeah. And they have so now. They, so there's actually something other than an EBS. Oh yeah, this is amazing. But this product is amazing. So this is really another game changer. So this is, a, a, in this box, there is a full instant replay system. It's only this box and support NDI. It has the full wow. NDI support. So you don't need anymore to have a big you know, server. Yeah. You just have this, it has four SDI in, but it support four NDI in. And, wow, and it it output to NDI, and it, and this, otherwise it, this it, is amazing. It, it it operates very much like an EVS, right? And it's right. got a very similar exactly. Yeah, it's got the, a very similar the, yeah, interface. Yeah, the, the, the one user of the big problems is, you have EVS is, operators, right. and they're like, ah, oh, I can't use this. Yeah, but yeah. but how many times? I mean, with EVS, it's always like, where's the the RS two thirty two? So so the uh, you know. No, so, no, this is really. So it's I, all I've been contained amazed. in here, right? And how and how many hours do you do you know how many? Oh, hours we can ask Alfredo. Alfredo. Forty. Forty hours? Right. Wow. And what format is it being um, saved in? Uh, the native, uh, the native uh, we, we can accept and record inside the native NDI streaming. Yep. And this is so, 10, 1080, 60? Yes. Ten, yes. Oh, that's amazing. And also we can transcode uh, Apple ProRes or DNX HD. Wow. Oh, this is brilliant. Yeah. And how much is this? The right price. 
the right price. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's, that's good. That's good. So, so this is fantastic. That's uh, really, this, I'm really this glad is you showed it to us. Yeah, this is something that uh, blow my mind. Honestly, yeah. at this show. Yeah, very new. That is a, that's it's really exciting. I mean, we love EVS as I use them in many many shows, um, but it's always you know it's a big it's a big system you right. know and it and it is expensive, um, right. and and so we you know we've always been looking. We were like somebody's got to be able to build a smaller one, um, and this this looks amazing. And we Hello, start Alex talking about the uh, NDI support with with Alfredo and BLT hey, hey. probably one year ago. I have a, I have an EVS operator in my okay. ear, Robert. Did you have a question? Hi, Alex. I was saying that uh, that controller looks very similar to an e, a traditional LSM box. So I'd like to see yeah, a close-up Yeah, so, so Robert's saying this looks very similar to it. He wants to see it again. Let's, let's get it. Okay. So this is an EVS operator, uh, and, and he's, 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 he's in my ear. And he said this looks very, very similar we to the EVS, to the, to, to the LSM. So you probably had in mind... We started the designing video server for slow motion, 1994, 1995, nearly same years that the other guys from Belgium. Uh, yeah, I, I see it's how it is. Way we are colleagues. <laughs> what, right. what, uh, very so, good, uh, friendly uh, competition. <laughs> what, what do you think, Robert, what do you, what do you think of the, of the controller? I think that's pretty cool. It looks very, since it's similar, that means uh, EVS operators can learn it a little quicker, uh, a little different than yep, uh, what absolutely. we see out of. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, a Dreamcaster or something like that. That, that is like a different, a little bit of a different setup. This is so compact because this is it, right? Yes. But th this is this is this is the whole thing. Yes, everything uh, is that box. Uh, there is a control panel mm -hmm. plus embedded video server. Right. And the magic to have a video server inside is that we developed this compact board where inside there is everything needed for the video server. Wow. What was in the previous generation in four different board rack sides mounted right. today is here. Amazing. Amazing. And, and it's all, is it all, uh, what kind of memory is use, are you using for this? As a storage? Yeah. M2. M2. SSD M2. Two terabyte or four That's terabyte? Stunning. Yes. Stunning. Thank you very much. Thank you for Thank coming. You. Thank you. It's great. So I told you, this is amazing. Yeah, it's yep. really good. <laughs> Thanks so much for stopping by. My pleasure. It's so good yeah, to see I, you in person. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, Thank talk you. Talk to you in the next yeah. event. Yeah, okay? we'll, we'll get you in. We'll have you. Uh, sure. We'll, we, we would like to have you on once a month to just answer NDI questions. Okay. Can you do that? Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll figure that out. Okay. Because we, we'd love to have you. You're so, it's so great to have you. All right. Bye. Thanks, everybody. That's, this is what happens at NDI. <laughs> You're wandering around, and, um, then, and then you get the world wow, expert cool. in NDI to come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's great. That was um, really very, uh, very so cool. There you go. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I forced yeah, it, it to happen. A little happen magic and, that just happened. Got... You did. <laughs> exactly. You did. I was like, what exactly. is Grant doing? What is he doing? You know, so, so um, uh, but it turned out perfectly, as always. There we go. Well, well, we'll leave it there with you, Alex. Um, thank you so much. We'll, we'll uh, check back in with you, you later. Awesome. Um, all right. So we, uh, we're going to go back. Here. We're going to go to the uh, booth in a minute, but just need a moment to say how cool that was. Uh, there was, I, I heard, I could see that Alex had his uh, IFB in. Um, and so I really just wanted to try. And I knew that we had a sort of a second and a half delay um, on the, on the uh, live view. Live view was rock solid. And so um, uh, I, I went rogue on everyone uh, and just kind of pushed back. And I'm glad I did because then we got to see a little bit of, of more of the floor. We got to see the Sony booth a little bit. We heard a little bit more. And then and then uh, Dr. NDI just rocks up and takes over and starts um, pointing out some really cool stuff. So um, there was a little bit of serendipity that happened there. On and the then floor. we got Robert on the panel providing expert yeah. information yeah. Boosh, yeah. right into the feed. That's amazing. Love that. Yeah. It was super cool, and this is the thing that we're doing, right? It's a, is that we're, we're lots of what we're doing with office hours is a proof of concept, right? And so what we're doing on the floor is 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 trying to push the technology a little bit more and just say what's possible. What is it possible for me at three o'clock in the morning in in Adelaide, South Australia, to to talk with you guys who are, and then people on the floor and then having the booth. 
And all of that to say, we really thank Zoom um, as our uh, connection partner for for making the the bandwidth of the booth. We wouldn't be able to do a bunch of this uh, without it. And so we really thank uh, Zoom for making that happen. Make sure you you um, check out this uh, this form. You can go here and sign up, and you'll get some updates. As uh, they had a bunch of announcements. If you missed it yesterday, we had Andy uh, from Zoom sit with us uh, just for a few minutes and show us a couple of the new things that they've got. Um, and uh, there's a, a bunch of things with Zoom ISO. He showed a demo of Zoom tiles, this thing that they've, this new way of creating some custom gallery views in Zoom, particularly helpful for us in, in production um, and hybrid events and things like that. So you could go back to yesterday's um, video that we had and, and you can see a little demo of that. And of course, we'll have him on a, on a second hour as well. But now um, we're going to go back to our booth um, and we've got Richard from Sub 2R. Are you receiving me, Richard? You can hear. You just I to, okay. think the mic is on. Yeah. Yes. We've well, okay. got you. Yes. Look, thank look, you. Look. Thank you all for having me here on the the last day of NAB. It's exciting. It's really mm. cool. Um, hey, before we get into sort of what what you've got at the show and some of the products, um, you, you've kind of I don't want to age you, but you've been around the industry for a <laughs> long time. Can can you give us a little a little bit of history of 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 where you came from and then and then co-founding um, uh, Subtua? Wow. Okay, real quick. Um, I'm actually, my background is in finance. I was a CFO for large companies and startups in Silicon Valley for years. Hated it. Hated absolutely every minute of it. Uh, and at one point in time, I had an opportunity to leave that and become a co-founder of a Vixel laser company. Uh, and that was back in 2010. And I saw an opportunity then for using Vixel lasers to do 3D high-speed imaging. And that's where we all be, that's where this company began, was doing that. And in order to do that, we had to have a camera that had some very specific features that we couldn't find in any other camera in the world. And so we said, gee, how hard can it be to build a camera? And that was 12 years ago. <laughs> uh, and the very first camera we built was really cool. It was a little cube and we called it Piggy because it looked like uh, a pig from Angry Birds and Serge, one of the co-founders, loved everything, you know, loved the video that came out of it, started posting it on YouTube. We got, surprisingly, people from around the world started asking us about the camera and I made it my job to say, hey, what is it about this camera that is so great you can't find anywhere else. And I had a whiteboard in the lab and I, I started, you know, collecting ideas. And then one day, a, uh, a young man from Nova Scotia, a Twitch streamer said, you had to build a camera for Twitch. To which I said, what's that? And he says, well, TwitchCon's in San Francisco next Friday, go check it out. What we realized is that there was a huge gap between webcams and professional gear. And most people start out with webcams and then moving to professional gear becomes very difficult. You get stuck in a world of DSLRs or professional gear and that's way beyond the, the, the expertise and talent of a lot of people. So we set out to build a camera that produces professional broadcast quality that is as easy to use as a webcam. And that was a basically a 10-year journey that got us to what's sitting on the table here right now. So I went wow. from being a CFO to being an engineer along with my three other co-founders. <laughs> That's super cool. And so this is the square one? Is this, this is the... Well, this one here is actually our hybrid. It's, a, it's our engineering okay. development camera that's got both the features of the square one and the Studio 460. The difference between them is both, both cameras produce um, 4K 60 as an output. It's a true 4K, no compression. Uh, and we're using a Sony IMX 294 image sensor, which is an absolutely gorgeous image sensor. The difference between the two models is that the uh, square one is an HDMI focused camera. So it has an HDMI, dedicated HDMI output because there's the world of game streamers 
content creators mm -hmm. all lives in a world of HDMI. Mm -hmm. For studios, for people who are moving into a real studio environment, everybody wants SDI. So we've got the, the dual 12G SDI, Gen Lock In, and then both cameras come with this really cool feature of an SFP cage. And the SFP cage allows you to buy an off-the-shelf module and convert the video signal into anything you want. So you can get IP, you can get optical, you can add another HDMI output, you can add an SDI output. It's really a fabulous way to give a lot of flexibility without burying that flexibility into the cost of the product. Wow, and is that a, what sort of mount, um, is that a, a, a um, an MF, uh, MFT mount um, on yes. that? Uh, we use yeah, a, yeah, we use a micro four thirds. Uh, yeah. We support the power functions of, the basic power functions of micro four thirds, which is zoom, aperture, and focus. And all of that can be controlled from the host. So basically, you know, the camera can be a remote location and you have full control over the, over the lens. Um, the advantage of the micro four thirds it's ubiquitous. I mean, you can find them everywhere. Any Micro Four Thirds lens supposedly works on any Micro Four Thirds camera, as close as any standard works like that. And there's a lot of really good glass out there that's affordable. And again, we wanted this to be an affordable solution. So, you know, if you've got an old Pentax or an old, you know, Olympus, and you've got some really good glass you want to play with, it bolts right onto the camera. That's cool. Um, we've got a couple of questions from the panel here, but uh, just what is that price point? Where does that sit? So the square one is targeted to come in at fifteen hundred, and that's mm -hmm. body, lens, power supply, mount, and cables. And these uh, the studio four hundred and sixty will come in at about twenty five hundred. Same thing: uh, body, lens, mount, mm -hmm. power supply, cables. Basically, open the box, plug it in you're off and ready to go. And, and uh, overheating protection and things like that for running sort of, you know, 24 seven type of, it's kind of designed in that way? So we have learned the hard way right. um, that anything, in, that you basically take the maximum amount of energy you could possibly dump into an electronic device and it all turns into heat. So you'll notice the, the odd shape of the camera. You probably have never seen a camera that looks like this. It's because the entire body is an integrated heat sink. So the camera is passively cooled and we have a separate passive cooling system on the image sensor itself and then one for the motherboard. The motherboard basically bolts up against the bottom of the, the housing and radiates the heat out. There are instances like when you put in an SFP module when passive cooling, this isn't gonna cut it. So we have an active cooling system a little little fan on the underside. But to give you an idea how crazy we are, we built a wind tunnel in our lab for testing fans. And one of the guys we work with builds those, those stunt planes, like you see the, the Red Bull stunt planes that are really crazy. He's got an airflow model uh, program. The grills over the fan are actually shaped like airfoils. So they reduce the drag into the fan by 30%, which means I run my fan 30% slower for the same amount of air, slower fan, less vibration, less noise. And then we mounted the fan on a neoprene gasket. It's not physically bolted to the camera, so it floats. The idea is reduce as much noise as possible inside the, the camera, because this camera also has dual microphones and then two microphones inside for picking up internal noise for noise cancellation. Wow, that's super cool. Um, over in, in New Zealand, we've got Adrian with a question. Hey, Richard, thanks for stopping by. Um, the, I picked up on the SFP Plus module and you've just covered off the heat because I was like, that's going to cook a camera. Um, <laughs> what protocols do you support uh, over IP with that module? Um, I don't know that offhand um, because that would be a, a separate I, a module. Um, SFP module, and I'm not familiar with all the protocols that are available for those right at this point. But we usually use like an embryonics or a Rydell module. Cool. 
thank you. That's great. We, we, it's a it's a badge of honour when we can when we can stump um, one of the oh, vendors. It's easy, um, with a it's easy to it's easy to stump me. I'm you know I'm the face. You know I'm not the you know I'm I'm not the I'm not the, I'm not the technical engineer. So you could you know stumping me is going to be like like shooting fish in a barrel. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, in Germany, we've got Lucas with a question. Yeah, thank you for being there. I think this is a really a great uh, thing. Uh, you uh, talked about many things we encounter a lot, like uh, having DSLRs uh, as our cameras and then having power consumption issues uh, like draining the batteries or uh, having overheating issues. And one issue we also uh, have, and that's uh, kind of my question, is uh, focusing. So uh, if you have control over focus, is there a built-in autofocus or something like that? So we do have a built-in autofocus. Um, and the, which, uh, the UI also has a manual focus. So from your host, if you're sitting in front of your 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 PC or your control center, uh, you can manually focus it or you can let it autofocus. And that's autofocus, auto exposure. Those standard functions are available on the camera. So one one thing to note is we built this camera basically with two mindsets. One is you can plug it in, turn it on, and it's going to work. I mean that's that's the idea is for somebody who's a professional who wants to to produce good quality video but is not a camera technician, is not a lighting technician. You know there are one person studios we call it. But on the flip side, if you want to dig into this, if you want to get down to the silicon inside the, the image sensor, we give you the tools to reprogram the image sensor. We give you the knowledge base to get into the registers, the thousands of registers inside the image sensor and reprogram it. And if you were to crack the case and look at the motherboard, on the motherboard is printed, if you have come this far, explore, innovate, and create. And we give you hooks to tie into the major components inside the camera. So we want you to crack the case. We want you to dig in and play, because that's where innovation is going to grow. That's where it's going to come from. And I think, this I think we're the only com camera company that will actually let you crack the case and go play with it. <laughs> I mean, in this community, this is definitely going to happen. Uh, and if I uh, may ask a follow-up, um, how is control handled? Is it over USB, over IP, both, nothing of that? Or how do you do that? Currently, we have a USB connection back to the host. We also have a module. You'll notice on the sides, there's these rack mount grooves. There's also rack mount grooves on the bottom. We have a module right now, which is a mesh network. And that mesh network allows you to tie multiple cameras together and then control them. That, mesh, that little module has a, has a USB pigtail that ties into the camera. But basically, we're using USB to connect to what's called an FX3 chip, which is a Cypress chip, which is sort of our, I'm, I'm going to use this probably incorrectly, but it's kind of the camera BIOS. You know, it controls all the functions and, and becomes the gatekeeper of the camera. Um, I probably didn't mention it. This is an FPGA-based camera. There's no ASIC for the image processing. So all of the processing, all the video processing is software-driven. So we can modify it, upgrade it. And we're looking at making the, IS, the blocks within the video pipeline like Legos. So you can pop them out, you can put them in, turn them on, turn them off, play with individual blocks to basically fine tune the, the image pipeline to what you want to see as, as a cinematographer. Amazing, that's very cool. Uh, I think Courtney in Hollywood has a question and we've also got a, a text question there, uh, Courtney as well. All right, my question was, uh, we looked at the, uh, is it uh, powerable over PoE, over ethernet, if you've got the ethernet module in there in your networking connection? We have done a PoE connection powered over Ethernet where the, you've got the pigtail that comes out and there's a <clears throat> you can run an auxiliary power in, um, which brings up a good point. We also have auxiliary power out on the back of the camera and inside the camera. 
So if you have something that runs five volts and you want to power that like a light or something else, you actually have a plug on the back of the camera where you, you can take power out of the camera and use that for driving other um, equipment. That is an isolated power rail, so it's not going to cause interference with the internal electrics. I see. And and the other question is, we we had looked at this camera earlier and saw the two ports on either side of the lens there of the Studio 460 and uh, debated whether or not they were uh, microphones, but I think you've answered that question, whether they were microphones or depth sensors, like ultrasonic depth sensors. So no, I guess mi- those are the microphones. Well, they actually serve a dual dual function. Um, they're microphones, but around the ring... Okay, yeah. Go ahead. You still got him? Um, so the other thing that the those those ports do is that they, they have a bank of um, RGB LEDs built into them. So those are controllable. And those can be used for giving you indications like on standby, are you on camera, are you running? Ah, Yeah, tally lights. And again, we've made it fully programmable by you so that you can make those those lights meaningful to you, you know. Yellow for standby, green, you're on the air, and red, we're not on you right now. You got it. You're free to pick your nose. Okay. Yes. (laughs) Thank you. Any questions I think we've got there, Courtney? Indeed. Coming in from uh, uh, Poland, we have a question from Robert Sababati. He says, do you have an offer for the camera without the lens for those that have uh, MFT lenses? And where can your product be purchased? So right now, the product will be, is still ready for launch. It'll launch next quarter. Um, we're taking names for basically pre-sale on it. We don't have a package for selling it without the lens. That's an interesting thought. Um, we basically have designed this to come with a stock lens. Um, not sure what that would do price-wise. I'd have to think about that, but that's a good thought. Thank you. And we have another question uh, coming in from uh, Dave Troutman in Edmonton, Canada. He says, uh, will the camera take a LUT? Can you download an external lookup table? Can you download a LUT? I'd have to ask Serge on that, because now, now you've stumped me for a second time. You're on to, you know, rack up, rack up the number of how many times can we stump Ridge in 20 minutes, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you've done um, you've done very well, but I think you've, what you've answered is that if if uh, it doesn't come standard, that people can build it out themselves. It sounds like you know they can start tinkering and, and working it out, right? Yes, I th- you know I my my answer is usually to something like that. I'm sure it's possible, but to be at, to be 100 percent honest, I would have to ask either Serge or Igor if that were something that it could accommodate. Yeah, that's great. Um, that's a. It, it, thank you for showing us. Um, it, it, you've, you've, you're speaking to the right community, right? Because as you can see, the setups that we've got, you know, we're we're kind of messing around with with uh, DSLR cameras, and we're having these overheat problems, and we're having other other issues that they don't like. Um, as you heard, you might have heard Alex was talking about that as well. He was talking to Sony, and they're like, "Oh, don't you know? Don't use these cameras for you know webcams and." things like that. And so um, you've absolutely got a part of the market that we're particularly interested in. uh, And the way that you're doing it uh, is very, very interesting. And so we're looking forward to uh, some of our uh, members being able to grab onto those and have a play around with it. Um, But before you go, I'm just interested in your general thoughts of of the show as well. As you've sort of walked around and and, and got around a little bit, is there any sort of trends or things that you uh, have kind of um, piqued your interest? So from from our perspective, the interesting thing we saw, this was a strategic show for us. We came to meet specific partners that we work with. And... Almost every one of them said, hey, we have this brand new thing. It's not in our catalog. We just released it. It's here right now today that we've been asking for for two years. And I think what you're seeing is 
that void that was created by the pandemic and all the world problems, everybody's beginning to catch up with that now. They're trying, they're finally getting back to norm. And for us, it's been a really exciting show from that standpoint that all of the people, we, and I'm sure this is true for every other company that's here, what we see is the, is the technology that's been stagnant now for several years, three years, four years, is now people are coming back into the market with you know, new products, new technologies. And I can't tell you how many times it's been like, no, no, we just released this today. It's not even in our catalog. We can't even give, sell it to you because we don't know what the price is, but here's this brand new whatever. And to us, this has been, you know, that has been the exciting part of the show. Um, and so things are coming together. And I think that the next few years are going to be very exciting because now everybody is coming back online and being able to produce some really cool technology. That's, that's, a, that's a great analysis of, uh, of where the industry is going. It's really exciting. Richard, it's been a great conversation. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. And gentlemen, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it and hope to see you soon. Absolutely. Thanks so much. All right. So now we're going to go um, on using our VizLink. We're going to talk to TJ, who's at Comica Audio. That's right. Thanks, Grant. Yeah, I'm here with, uh, with Karina here at Comica. Karina, what can you tell us about uh, Comica and your audio products? Hello everyone, I'm Krena uh, from Comica Audio. Hey, hi, hi everyone. And I'm from uh, Comica Audio. Comica Audio is a Chinese audio brand. Yeah, we are a manufacturer. And Comica Audio was built uh, in 2016. Yeah, 2016. And we have a wide, uh, wide range uh, product line covering wireless, uh, wireless mic microphone, shotgun microphone, uh, audio interface, audio mixer, and some other uh, audio accessory. Yes, audio ac accessory. And our product line can meet different uh, level uh, user groups demands like uh, broadcasting level, uh, micro video, um, podcasting, live streaming, yeah, and act. Yes, and today I mainly want to introduce about our uh, latest product, which hasn't been released yet. Yet, uh, and its launch time would be uh, in July, I think. Yeah, July or August. It's a shotgun wireless microphone. Yes, and uh, this is the updated version, VM40. VM40. Yeah, it's the model name is uh, VM40, and uh, last year we launched the first. Uh, generation. The model name is uh, VM30, yes. VM30, yes. It's also a wireless shotgun microphone. Uh, after its launch, yeah, uh, yeah, its, it's sales is, is uh, going rapid, uh, rapidly up. And based on this generation, now uh, we updated a new version. Yeah, in this case, we have two shotgun microphones as the uh, transmitters, yes. As the difference between uh, the difference between these two generations is first, uh, based on VM30, we uh, put two shotguns as uh, the transmitter in this case, and we would add onboard recording. Uh, yeah, onboard uh, onboard recording is uh, 32 uh, gigabytes. Yeah, to 32 gigabytes, and it's 32 bit recording, yes. And it supports both uh, analog and the digital outputs. Uh, and what's more, uh, let me think, yeah. Karina, can you, yeah, I, can you yes, hear me? Hello? Uh, yes. Uh, hello? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, hello, yes, hello, yes, hello, you can hello. hear me. Yeah, I can okay, see. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. Um, Questions? Thank you. Uh -huh. Very, yeah, very exciting products. Um, uh -huh, uh -huh. That, that sounds great. Um, we've got a, a sound recorder for many years, location recorders. Um, Courtney in, in Hollywood has a question for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it was good to see the uh, this new uh, MO40. And uh, is the transmitter separate or is it built into the microphone itself as a, as a type of body pack size uh, package uh -huh. or is it built in? The size of the package? The transmitter for the uh, shotgun microphone, is it part of the microphone itself? Is it built in? Uh, yeah, it, it, you mean the, it's built in uh, onboard recording? It, it, th this is, it, it's, this is it's all one unit? It's part of the microphone. 
Oh, no, it's two shock on mic. Two shock on mic and uh, one transmitter. Yeah. Oh, one trans okay. oh, yeah, no, 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 sorry. Uh, it, one receiver. Yeah. Two shotguns uh, work at the transmitters and the one receiver. Yeah. And does it work in conjunction with your uh, Vimo Q4 mic uh, receiver? Ah. Which is your phone uh, mic setup? Vimo uh, Q. Are you, you you know Vimo Q? Oh, I looked at it on your website. Yeah, it was a very interesting uh, product because it gives you okay, four channels Vimo, into a single small receiver. Yes, yes. Vimo Q is a wireless lapel uh, microphone. Wireless, uh, lovely microphone. But this one is wireless shotgun microphone. Yes, two transmitter, two shotgun, and Vimo Q uh, for uh, lovely microphone. Yeah, as the transmitters. Yes. So you could use the shotgun microphones on two roving cameras and feed it into your sound mixer who has the receiver that or broadcast uh, the two outputs from the, the two separate shotgun microphones that are camera mount. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Got it. Great. Yeah. And 32-bit recording. Glad to see that on... Uh, is the 32-bit recording is in the receiver? Uh, 32 gigabytes. You, you, you mean the onboard recording on transmitter? Yes. Yeah, on transmitter, yes. It's on the transmitter, okay, great, yes. rather than on the receiver. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's uh, you connect to uh, USB to download those files, correct? Yes, correct. USB output okay, for the thanks. digital transmission, yeah. Thanks for right. the information. And is there is there any other products that you can show us? Have you got the Vimo C um, product there? Vimo the lapel. C, right? Yes. Vimo C, yeah, right? Have you got okay, that? Yes. okay, okay. I will, I will show you. Thank you. So this is our Vimo C. Yeah, two colors. Okay, I show mm -hmm. you. Yeah, black color and a white color, two colors. And Vimo C is for uh, consumer level users. Yeah, consumer user. Uh, and it's two uh, dual transmitter, dual transmitter wireless cage. Yes, two transmitters. Yeah, two transmitters and one receiver. Okay, um, yes. it, it's it's universal for uh, smartphone and uh, camera. Okay, for camera yes. and yes, and with uh, beside this model, we still have Vimo S. Vimo C means uh, for camera, and the Vimo S for smartphone. Yes. Yeah, okay. it's it, it, yeah, it's it's very it's very cute the size. Yeah, as you can see, yeah, its receiver is a magnetic. Yeah, very cute, very uh -huh. small, compact. Yeah. Yes. Design. And then, and then the Vimo Q, which I guess is quad, is it? Is for four lapels. Ah uh, yes, you are right. Q means quad. Yes. Okay. C means camera. S means smartphone. Yes. Vimo Q means. Q means quad, yes. Uh, let me show you this black one, yes. Two colors. Yeah, uh, this case was released last year, yeah. yeah. And actually in this show, many people uh, came, uh, came to us asking about this case, yeah. And all uh, display demos are already sold out. Yeah, people, is this, is this, in this afternoon, we all came out to take it away, yeah. <laughs> Very hot now, wow. yes. Wow. Uh and and so it has one receiver for the four transmitters. Yes. And, yes. Right. And but is that doing four channels of audio, or is it mixed down to two channels of audio and stereo? How is that? Oh, uh, we have different modes. Yes. And okay. if you want four different uh, individual tracks, you can just uh, use this cable. Two, two these cables. From 3.5 to XLR, okay. yes. As we mm -hmm. uh, we have two outputs, outputs on the receiver, so, so you can use two uh, huh? this kind of cables to make four uh, individual tracks. Yes. Mm -hmm. And is that the the transmission frequency of that? Is that over 2.4 gigahertz? Is that what yes. that is? Yes. Is, two yeah. uh, two point four gigahertz. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what is the battery wow. life on your transmitters? Do you know? Battery life duration up to uh, 16 hour. Wow, 16 great. hour, yeah. Now, does that include, a, is there a recharger in that? Uh, does uh, it recharge from the case? Uh, yes, uh, rechargeable, yes, in the case. As you can see, the, the box, 
Yeah, it, it, the box is no, not only for storage, but also for charging. Yeah, here is a USB-C charging interface. Yeah. Wow. It's a multifunctional uh, box, yes. Yeah. Very, very cool. Hey, mm -hmm. uh, um, thank you, Karina, for showing us through the products. That's very exciting. But um, I, I really love the, the wireless shotgun. Sounds very exciting. And then, and then that, that quad um, uh, lapel system is very, very interesting. Um, and, so glad that you uh, yeah. could show us. And thank you. Thank you. I'm also excited. Uh, so many people are hearing uh, my introduction. Yes, it's a good opportunity to show our company and our products. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right. We'll leave it there. Um, we're going to go uh, and uh, and just have a pause, have a little moment, have a, have a breath. I can check in with the panel. We'll see how, how everyone's feeling. Um, Guy, I'm interested in your, your thoughts, your observations of, of what's happened today. Yeah, it's funny because I'm looking at the the floor map and I'm like, okay, they're at Comica. How close are they to something cool? Like what's nearby? And it just makes me want to want to be there. And I like seeing, again, we're right now the VizLink is kind of on the move and it's like, okay, what? What's what's there? What? Because uh, one of the uh, announcements was at Atomus, but it kind of flew under the radar uh, that you can get uh, an NDI license now for any of the uh, ninjas. So it's the least expensive NDI monitor that you can buy. But it, it's like news that just nobody's talking about. Nobody knows about it, but you guys do now. But that's really cool that that's something brand new. You can get this license, and it turns any ninja into a or shogun or any of the older models into yeah it's really cool and so they got the guy from bird dog so Eamon drew is new to the atomus team and so little things like that like you you, you kind of go out there and you get a feel for what's new and there's all this talk about things like the the ross carbonite code and i, I just i, I want to I'm an NDI junkie. I, I'm admitting it here. And I just, I keep hearing all this news like, okay, 30 input and EVS. It's like, man, I, I, want, I want to play with it all. I want to get it all. But, you know, there's only so much time and so much money. But that's what the trade show is for. Learn the news, try it out, uh, you know, inquire, get more information. So it's, it's been a great show. I mean, I'm surprised, like uh, the former uh, guest just said, uh, there's a lot of stuff that was kept under wraps for two, three years. And we're just mm. seeing it come to market. A lot of people are working on stuff and they just were hush hush about it. Well, yeah, I guess it, it's coming out of the chip shortage and stuff as well, right? That that sort of happened too, that was slowing things down a little. And, and then the pandemic sort of had effects in multiple ways, right? Like where, where there, there seemed like there was shipping issues and, and, and all sorts of stuff. I mean, Guy, you knew that um, very well uh, from, a, from a, a retailer point of view of, of even just trying to get products, right? Yeah, it was crazy there for a while. I mean, it, it went, we were lucky. We had a ton of uh, items on hand, specifically PTZ cameras, capture cards. And so for the first like three, four months, we were like, woohoo, we're setting all kinds of records. And it was like, we need more. And they're like, uh, there's nothing. And I was like, we need more. And they're like, yeah, wait, you know, there's portage shortage in, in uh, um, LA, Long, Long Beach, all the boats are offshore. So uh, it, it was real. So I, I like uh, hearing that there's more software and FPGA stuff like uh, being able to upgrade things, uh, not physically, but just through software. And Blackmagic is proving this time and time again that they can do this where they can take uh, new features and add them just in with hardware and just for a lot of times, they just give it away for free. You know, it's just like, who knew that the 6K could be a webcam? Well, we all wanted it to be one and now it's beta. It's not that's not final, but that is uh, something you can download today. But it was free, uh, just announced a, a week ago. So little things yeah. like that, I love it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we've, we're seeing a lot of that where where uh, it's it's sort of cutting edge things that people are announcing, you know, all these groups that are like, well, we have to announce something. We want to come to NAB and announce, put our best foot forward and and actually show that we've got a new product coming um, later this year or, or whatever it is. And so it feels like you're hearing it first. Um, but to your point, Guy, about like, how do you hear the the, the announcements? Because it's one of the things when, I, when I've been at NAB is walking around, you can still miss a whole bunch of things. You can walk straight past a booth that had some amazing thing and you, and you completely missed it. And so um, trying to kind of filter all of that and, and get some interest in. I see everyone wearing lanyards with vMix on it, right? And, and I was thinking, oh, it'd be great to get to vMix and, and see the, the Aussie boys there and, and talk about, um, 
you know, what they, what they are pushing and how Zoom is going. They've got that, the new integration with the Zoom SDK and, you know, it'd be interesting to talk. But, you know, so we could spend a couple of weeks just trying to have a walk around all this stuff. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah uh, Ronnie, what, what, uh, what are your observations as you're sitting here uh, as we're going around? No, I don't want to talk. I just suck it in, uh, suck it in, and, <laughs> and and like like I says, I'm I'm actually actively uh, monitoring the the moving cameras inside the the show floor and see what's that, and uh, I actually have it pinned on my first screen. So, um, but as a general uh, uh, observation, I see that there is less AI. Uh, noise, at least in our broadcasts, uh, than expected. Yeah. Um, yeah. I see more uh, innovations being done on different uh, technologies. I see improvements, as Guy just mentioned, I see improvements on um, older hardware being refreshed by adding software. And I, and I was wondering, is, is it uh, kind of a trend that we are seeing the FPGAs uh, coming into more and more hardware? I'm starting to yeah, I think- kind of be more and more focused on that. And maybe that is actually something that will uh, drive consumers the other way yeah, or that way. I think so. Hey, hey Ronnie, um, something that we've been really excited about is having the VizLink um, and being able to do like this really low latency conversation um, with people on the floor. Um, and so now... While they weren't close enough to our booth <laughs> for us to be able to do that, um, what's awesome is we've got Alex with VizLink um, and uh, we're able to have a chat with him now. Alex? Thanks, Grant. Um, and we are here in VizLink. I'm here with John Landman, uh, an old friend <laughs> that we've been talking with. John and I have been in wireless adventures for yes. a decade. So, um, Absolutely. And, 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 go, and we'll pull that a little closer there for you. And, and the, so we are, um, uh, we're here at VizLink. And tell us, do you have anything new here today? Yeah, we do actually. We just released a product called the Dragonfly, which is uh, about the size of a, a TikTok box. Let's take a look I at could, it I here. could actually Let's grab one over here. here. Um, I believe this is the smallest wireless transmitter that's available today, uh, from a spec perspective. I mean, so and yeah, so <laughs> it, I mean, so it's so. What's the resolution? So this is a 1080, 1080p HDR. Uh-huh. Uh So encoder. ten bit. Ten bit. Yep. Yeah. Ten eighty p sixty. Sixty um, HDR. So Amazing. that's that's great. Um, comes in two flavors, actually three flavors. Either Cofton, so gives you very very reliable two gig wireless transmission. Right. Range is a, is a is around that of a football field. Right. So it's uh, 500 milliamps, mm-hmm. or 50 milliamps, sorry, 50 milliamps, wishful thinking. Yeah. Um, and second version is HDMI, so it's SDR HDMI right. with camera control. I don't think anyone else has a wireless transmitter. So anyway, not only can you send the video out, you can get camera control, control back. back. Yes. And we have one with a SIM inside. So, so it's got a 5G, 5G cellular connection. So you could really send somebody anywhere. With this little I mean, box. Y- you've got a live view backpack on. Right. I could replace that whole backpack, put this little guy right. in his pocket. And yes, it may not be bonded cellular, but single cellular here is, is really good. I mean, right, right, right. we're using HEVC compression. So if you give me three megs up, I'll give you a very nice looking image. Right. And... With camera control, that means that you can actually paint paint that camera back from your booth. Wow! With that thing, <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, and is, lo- this, is this out to, out today? Comes out next month. Right. Um, taking orders already. What's the price point? About ten k. Yep. About ten k. Uh, re- re- you know, we have a receiver that goes with that that you add onto it if you're using Coftum, and we don't need a receiver. We have a cloud platform, uh, j- just like uh, for the five G. For the five G, goes right. up to the cloud. We can then push it to decoders, CDNs, you name it, right? right. So very excited. Had a lot of interest uh, with this, and uh, it's a it's a lot of fun. You know, it's a lot of fun uh, selling this. Absolutely. And yes. now you've got here, there's a couple <laughs> things over here. So sometimes you don't want a little receiver. You have these are the full. These are these are no. These are viewpoints. So these are bonded. Th- this is bonded. So let, let's let's have a quick look at our 
Kofta microwave products, right. right? So this is this is the big daddy. This is what you're going to see at the Olympics. And this is what we're using over in the yes, Central Hall, yes. and it has transformed our show. <laughs> this is this is um, what is used at the Olympics, the Super Bowl. This is when you want to have reliable, you know, hip-free kind of video. This is who you're going to rely on. Camera control up to 4K. Um, you know, everything that you would expect from Vizlink as a company. I mean, Vizlink as a company is a 50-year-old co or 30-year-old company. It's not that, you know, this is their bread and butter. This is what they're known for. Right. Um, you know, again, this is the kind of wireless solution that allows you to sleep at night. Um, our Coftum stuff, or COFDM stuff, it comes in a, a different sizes. This is the Big Daddy. There's one in between that's over here. That's called the click. What is really cool about this guy is that it's a, a single 4K wireless transmitter and can do from 2 gig up to 7 gig with the same antenna. And this is 100 milliwatts. And when you say 2 gig to 7 gig, these are licensed? These are licensed frequencies. And can you explain why that's important? So when you go to, let's, talk, let, let's say you know, we're in a political season. If you've got, got to go and cover the RNC or the DNC, usually there's someone there that is coordinating the frequencies. Um, broadcasters can use 6, can use 7. Uh, law enforcement uses 4.9. There's 2 gig. And then... Hopefully, if you pay the frequency coordinator enough, he'll give you a decent frequency. Right. We can then tune this into that frequency that means that you won't get any interference when you're running around with your camera. You know, the, the statistics that I've got for the DNC is that there's going to be 20 wireless cameras running around at that event. And obviously, someone has to manage who gets what or they'll all be stepping on each other. As I mentioned, the click can do single 4J or dual 1080p. And this has basically the same range as the one we just looked That's at. That's double the range. Oh, well, the, the, the Dragonfly is half. Right. This is double. Um, and that, depending on uh, the, the, rate, the antennas that you put on, will get you different ranges. That also uses, a, you know, we use diversity antennas. What are diversity antennas? Uh, and let's imagine, again, we're at the DNC, which is a large area. I can put an antenna in each corner of the, uh, right. of the show, and wherever I'm moving around, I will connect to the, uh, the closest and most right. powerful antenna. That's typically how you know, we do the Super Bowl or, or any of the large events. You use diversity antennas. That's going to get you the reliability and the range. I'm going to grab that one. We had a question. Um, so, typically, this is, this is where we put our antenna. Correct. What is, what is this? Um, one is for camera control. Got camera it. control and wireless video. Got so it. So, two different radios. So, this one has camera control built in as well. Got it. And that's why we, that's why we do that. And this is when you're talking about camera control. This is controlling this camera over here, right? Yes. So, we've, we've built this... A transmitter into the uh, Grass Valley uh, camera. Um, if you if you look at it on the back here, be beautifully designed, sleek, um, self-contained. We also make this for your friends at Sony. Yep. So we make a Sony version, a Grass Valley version, an integrated wireless transmitter and camera control. See, that's the camera control transmitter. And you know, if we go back here. This is where we're receiving it. Over in the, the, the quantum receiver and the camera control also. There you go. Um, it's, it's, it's real and alive here. So when you think of Vizlink, you know, typically people think of this kind of technology. Right. Uh, a number of years ago, we purchased a company called Mobile Viewpoint, which, which is a bonded cellular yep. uh, uh, technology. Um, you know, combining the two countries, uh, companies actually gives us something very unique. We can do camera control over our bonded cellular connection. Right. Which, which is kind of very different. I, I don't think anyone else uh, offers that. So you could run your paint over cellular, which in certain environments is very important. 
Right. You know, that, this means that you can not only move around inside the stadium, but run outside the stadium and still paint the camera. Yeah. So, so that's uh, something that we're doing. And it's, so, it's doing. so important in live environments is to be able to paint that camera, be able to open it up, we, close it up. Well, you up. know it, right? You're moving uh, in a stadium. You're moving from, uh, you know, a shadow to a, you know, a, a sunny area. From one side of the outside of the stadium, you're in the shadow, and then you're moving. Yeah, you you have to be able to paint that camera. And often the cameraman's trying to do the cameraman's job. He right. he's not focused on, uh, you know, the, the the quality or the you know the look of the the image. That has to be done back in the truck. I've got and, a question can, uh, yes. from Lucas Herzog in Mans, Germany, and and Lucas asks, does the Dragonfly have comms audio connection back to the transmitter? No. Right. And the way we do no. it, now how many channels does it carry? How many audio channels does does the does the, um, the, the transmitter? The Dragonfly. Carry? That's a great question. Um, well, I, I want to say two. Right. I want to say two. Now, because a lot of times the now it's oh, because it's our, yeah, cause our, it, our larger version has comms, right? So this has IFB and comms back into it, right? Right. So not only is it transmitting the video one and way, it can take the it can pull the audio out the other direction. And, if you have and, the server and on the other tally, side, of it. right? And tally. and tally. And the rig that we bought, we gave you, we 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 had another transmitter that was sending to another receiver on the camera with a monitor yeah. to give us that bi-directionality. And which is incredible. Like it, well, I'm it, glad it you're changed, enjoying it. It changed the way we cover events. I mean, it, it was. It, I think we really broke new ground this with your transmission. Are you going to be at the DNC or the RNC? Do we have to do it again? Uh, I we definitely want to do it again, <laughs> and we'll see if they invite us. Yes, so, yeah, let's see. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. It's so thank great, you. and thank you so much for the support. It's it's great working with you, Alex. Yeah, yeah. It's always fun. Always. <laughs> Thanks, Rand. Is there anything else you have? Any, any awesome. questions? Oh, just I just wanted to to back up what you were saying, Alex, about how much it's changed. Um, being being able to do that two way communication that we've done with the Vislink um, is unreal, yeah. and the way that the way that vendors have been able to engage with us because they can see us um, is it, worked really really well. So I it's mean, an impressive product. After the first day, after the first day of doing it, of doing the the. Um, using the VisLink and, and setting this up. So we have, you know, with the with, uh, camera going out, or camera coming back, right. zoom going out. Yep. And we thought, people are going to have a hard time understanding what this is. No, nope. they immediately just locked right onto it, started having conversations. And we were like, I just want to get, I mean, this is hard now. Like, this is a thing I'm not used to anymore. You've got to wait for the... Well, it's, and, and, I, and you know, it's, it's just that it's, I mean, it's just that this, this ta us talking like this, right. we're so used to now you just talking to the camera and you're talking, you're, you know, and so the other kid people are, back and forth. Right, and so it's just, it's right. an entirely I mean, different the, thing. I mean, the disadvantage of using Bonded is, is the latency, right? right. Um, it gives us a lot of flexibility. It you know, does. Live View supplied this to us and we've been using I, it for I love a lot Live of shows. And, They're great guys. I mean, they, I'm, I'm, not, and, I'm not knocking and them. We've, um, I've used them for a decade. I know you, know, you have. And, and, and the thing is, is that what it means is I can go... I can go anywhere, you know, like, and, and be able to put them in. And, and, and again, they've solved a lot of those, you know, a lot of the, it's not just that they have the, they negotiate all those things. Sure. But, you know, and so, and so we, we, we've been really successful with them. But as you said, the latency is higher, you know, and the is. thing is, is that, and, and having that immediate, you know, that immediate response inside of the central hall has just been a magical. You know? Well, we'll have to do it again, but oh, yeah. let's just... You know, we, uh, you just had a guy watching from Germany yeah. interacting with us. Yeah. I mean, we're yeah. living in, you know, in, with such technology nowadays, it, it's yeah. really crazy. Yeah, it's a, a, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, next year I'll get you a dragonfly with, with, a, cellar, with a sim in, and, in, and you can literally walk around the show. We're ready. Um, yeah, you'll be the first that gets one. <laughs> I Very promise. Good. That's, I a, promise. that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've got, we're, we're doing these shows every couple months, so okay. it'll, it'll be fun. What's the next one? Uh, Cinegear. So Cinegear in June. In June, okay, outside. Then, uh, yeah. outside, outside. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then, and then um, uh, there's Cinegear in June, uh, Seagraph in mm -hmm. Denver in uh, the end of July. Right. And then we have a European team doing uh, IBC. IBC. And then we'll be doing NAB. Uh, New York. In New York and AES. Okay. Okay. And, then, and then we're, we think we might do C uh, CES. Okay, and, but, why not? But here's the interesting thing, is that the wireless, we think we might add more because what it, what it means is that we don't have to send um, necessarily a camera talent out 
we can simply send a crew that can do this, right? And our talent is remote. You yeah. know, like you know, so yeah. so that yeah, you know, yeah. and so they can be just talking back and forth, and so uh, so we may increase the number of shows we do because we can do that. And it won't be as as big as what we're doing here, but it'll be something we could go to a lot of different shows and set that up. If we are in, if we have enough time to plan, yeah, um, we can definitely do larger areas and cover yeah, yeah. larger areas. No, right? absolutely. So, so that's the trick here. Yeah. Um, well. You know, they, they were very good to us at the show about the frequency that they gave us. So I'm very yeah. appreciative of the NAB organization. And, and I think we're going to get a lot more help. We NAB was really excited about what they they they're really excited about what we're doing. So they they they're very supportive. And so I think that our opportunities will be much more expansive next year. I look forward to helping you next year as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks, John. All right, All right. back to you, Grant. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to getting a, a Vizlink in each of the halls next year. Uh, and so we just need a little yes, boot in each of the halls. Grant, Grant wants, we'll, to put a, uh, we'll uh, wants to put a Vizlink into each hall. Each hall. We, we can, <laughs> it's just a function of money. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Time and money. That's all it is. Yeah, as, as long as it's their money, um, we're fine. We can spend their money. That'd be great. <laughs> 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 All right, we're going to move on. Thank you, Alex. Um, we are going to go now back over the Vizlink. Uh, we're going to use the Vizlink and, and we're going to um, talk to Bill. Bill, you're at OC, it seems. Tell me all about OC. I am. You know, this is really fascinating. You're walking through NAB and you look down and you see a product and you go, that looks interesting. Let me talk to him. So I'm here with Lauren of OC and he is going to tell you about this amazing little thing. Looks like a, a live production thing in a box. Lauren, take it away. Just talk to him. Okay. This is a small kit used for live production. We include a panel, a case and a switch from OC. For this kit, we can accept four HDMI input as well as the fifth input, which can be configured from NDI uh, USB camera or an internal video player. And we can stream out up to three streams at the same time. For example, you can stream to YouTube, uh, Twitter, and uh, some kind of customer RTMP. And uh, we also have flexible, uh, flexible power supply. We can use a power bank inside. We can use uh, AC outlet outside, or you can put it with a uh, camera battery like we mount or gold mount. For this small one, we have standard features similar to Atom Mini, uh, but we have a, a more HDMI output, so you can connect to an uh, out uh, project or something like that. Well, uh, can, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. You can hear Hello? me? Oh, great. Hello. Uh, you said about a USB camera um, that you can use as an input. You said NDI or a USB camera. Uh, can you have pan uh, tilt, pan zoom, <laughs> pan tilt zoom oh. control of the USB camera? Uh, for current design, we have only the connection. I mean the signal source to put into the switch, but there is no PTZ control uh, on the switch. So if you would like to control the camera with pan, tilt, or zoom, you need a separate controller. Right. And uh, the network control the, or the network uh, output, there's just Ethernet, or is there cellular connection that you can use as well? Uh, we have two options for network uh, uh, connection. One is the Ethernet. You can connect, uh, stream out up to three streams. And the other one is you can use a cell phone to as a hotspot. So you can use a mobile network to transmit your live stream. 
and the cell phone can be connected on the back a USB port. Okay. Uh, we we have a question from Dave. He says, "Does your switcher handle graphics, effects, and playback?" Uh, we have internal video video playback from this SD card. Okay, and uh, also we have two still image store which can be used uh, for graphics. And uh, if you'd like, you can use some of the show graphic uh, software like uh, Uno to generate dynamic uh, graphics and uh, use a green sc screen to shopping pause the graphic on the video. And with an NDI input, can uh, is there um, transparency? Can you overlay NDI on a downstream uh, key? Currently, we only support uh, NDI HX. This means there's no alpha channel. It's only okay. a video channel. Okay. It, it, it's very powerful, very, very impressive product. And it, it comes with the case and the screen and everything. Everything we see there, is that the, that's the full product? Uh, for this package, we come with the panel, the case, and the switch. And the switch. Wow. That's very cool. Um, and the uh, price is only 19, uh, 19, uh, 900 USD. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And the... The streaming quality that you can do, are you able to do different, you said you could stream to three different destinations. Can they be different qualities or the same qualities? For the stream art, uh, we need the same quality, but uh, uh, we have an internal record, video record, which can be set to as a high quality, different from the stream art. That's great. And you have other products as well, other than this one. It, can you show us other products? Uh, yeah, we have another product, uh, which is a video switch. This switch basically is the same as the one used in the cat, but the different is we add four SDI. Uh, import and uh, these four SDI import can be used with the HDMI import. This means, uh, for example, you can configure the input one as SDI and the input two as uh, HDMI, any combination of the four import. And uh, also, we introduce the new PC software so you can control the switch by using the software. This software can be installed on the Mac or Windows. And also, we have integrated a companion plug-in. So this means you, uh, this switch can work with the companion ecosystem. For example, you can control the switch by using the Stream Deck. Wow. We use Stream Dex and Companion a lot, and so seeing that, we really like that because we can do remote control um, of that yeah. as well and, and, and make it work from anywhere. Yes. So for uh, Companion, this means we have a lot of flexible to use the switch with other equipment. Yeah. Amazing. And... You also have uh, other panels as well. It's like your those the the monitors. They're, they're also like your product. The, the quad split. You monitor. mean this panel? Yeah. Uh, basically, this is a small portable display, but we designed to meet a different kind of frame format because some portable monitor on the market can only accept a sixty frame rate, but this monitor can 
except 24, 25, 30, 50, and 60. And we also design uh, uh, these guys to support the switch as well as the panel. And uh, mm. we will provide uh, this design uh, in our user group so you can download it and uh, print it by yourself. And uh, wow. if you are interested, we can send the data file to you and you can release it to anybody they like it. Wow. And um, just our last question, are the buttons um, programmable on, on the surface? Can you change what the buttons do? Uh, we design a full-featured uh, uh, control surface. You can uh, switch uh, and define the effects. And also we have eight macros. So you can define your macro and uh, operation in the field quickly. And also we integrate an uh, internal manual system. So if you don't like uh, the software, you want to run this switch stand alone, you can use the internal manual to control everything inside the switch. Wow. Very, very cool. A full menu system built in as well. That's, a, that's yeah. really cool. So yeah. this means we provide a very flexible control method for use with the live production. Excellent. Thank you so much for showing us the very, very cool products. We, we love them. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Another little breather for our, our panel. Courtney, what did you take of that? I'd be. I'd love to see what the price was on that. Oh, uh, Bill, oh. Bill, you're jumping in. Hello, Bill. Yeah, hey. it, yeah. We have a little bit of time. I know Alex is getting ready for our next hit. He's changing halls, and unfortunately, he has to make the big run. We're in. Uh, he's, I think, in uh, West Hall, and the next interview is in South Hall. That is an incredible <laughs> distance. I'm not sure if they're taking the underground loop tunnel or something else, but they're going to go through. So I just wanted to, to kind of babble for a moment about some of my strategies. You know, here we are on the last day of NAB, and I've been coming to NAB for, gosh, it seems like 25 years or so. One of the techniques that I used as somebody who was trying to get my, my practice off the ground was I found out that nobody wants to go through too much expense shipping products back home. So I learned early in my year that if you actually go to a booth, say there's a piece of gear that you want, a piece of grip gear, something that is going to last you your whole career, and you've been going, you know, I really don't want to spend $900 for that big grip stand that I would love to have, but I can't afford it because I'm just a starving student. I used to go to booths at NAB on the last day and I would make them an offer. <laughs> I would basically say, do you really want to pay to ship this home? If I give you 250 bucks under the table, can I just take it away from the booth? And more often than I, than I ever found, people would say, heck yeah. They would use that cash to take the crew out for lunch or something like that. They didn't have to ship it back. And if I had a way to get it back. So that's how I built a lot of kit. It's these little insider things that I thought you might be might have fun with. Has anybody else on the panel or anybody else ever done anything so like that? Your uh, your backpack is full of gear now, is it? Is that is that what just happened? Pocket full of hundreds. <laughs> I've done I that still thing. have, after thirty years, stands that I bought off the floor at NAB at half price or less, <laughs> just yeah, because I realized that it was going to cost them more to ship it back than it would be if I took it off their hands and just got it out of there. Is, I would rather a, just uh, join up with the vendors in the after party. That would be a really great thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody can do that. You have to find a booth where there's somebody with enough, enough authority to say, yes, I will remove that from inventory as damage promo or something. But it worked. It, Bill, Bill, is that a Black Magic 12K I can see that you've just got in your pocket there? Is that <laughs> I don't. Shh, 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 shh. We're not supposed to talk about this stuff. Are you? No, you know something. There has been some swag on the floor at NAB, but I didn't see this oh, yeah. as a swag-heavy show this year. I think I got uh -huh. one baseball cap, 
And uh, what else? That's just about it. I mean, you know, of course, now I wasn't just going to 100 booths either. Are you still in the OC booth there? Are yeah, I'm still, still next to the OC booth. Did you get a price on that GoStream deck that looked like an ATM Mini? That uh, the the original one we saw over there? No, not the one that's all combined in one. Just the deck itself. Just the oh, switcher yeah, we didn't itself. Get a price on it's that one. It's just under uh, five hundred. That one says eight ninety nine prominently. Oh. I don't see anything uh, listed here. No, uh, Robert's got it. In fact, was it? well. Here's the only other thing is that one of their large monitors, I see 1239. So the product, the product prices are very modest. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, this is not the stuff that's out of reach. Three, nine, 395. Uh, let's go back around. Let's turn around this way. So I guess this little rig, the monitor there any, is just 395. Any further bids? Any further bids? <laughs> <That's what laughs> that like. See if they're going to take them back <laughs> to China. Live 400, 400. What am I bid? What am I bid? <laughs> Well, and will they take a hundred bucks for you to take it off their hands now? Yeah, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> here it is on the website. It's, you okay, know, yeah. NAB is its own beast. It's, it's fabulous to be here. And I wish we could give you a real sense of the scale. We've been working as hard as we can to continue to expand our footprint here based on yeah. where we are. And I've been told that some of the big screen LED rigs have been blocking some of our signals. Uh, you know, we wanted to get to even more booths than we did, and we wanted to get to some specific ones. The only reason we weren't able to is we just couldn't get the connection to go live from there. It's something we'll work on for the future, and hopefully at some point yeah. we'll be able to go to any place. Yeah. Uh, well, and Bill, can you just step out into the hallway a little bit there and just give us a shot down? Sure. You know, we, we, we've been Yeah, let's go backwards here. Yeah, Sorry to turn the back of my head to you. I apologize. In between the different booths and yeah. things and sort of the whole In fact, and I'll, give you, I'll give you a little look at kind of the general layout of things. We are in Central Hall. Out there is the front doors of the convention center. And there's a set of steps in front of me where you see the word Zolar way back in the background. That is about halfway from here to the end of this hall and to the area that you kind of go out to the front of what was originally the North Hall. It's got construction everywhere. There are cranes out front. They are rebuilding North Hall. Uh, this is uh, expanding again. Construction okay. thing where they tore down the Riviera Hotel and other things and are building what you just were at, I understand, uh, West Hall is huge and full of people. Uh, we are just at the margin of this, so let's go this way a little bit. And if you can see down where that far sign is, that is the width of Central Hall that we're in right now. So there are three halls at least this big. And the South Hall, which is that direction from me, has two floors. So anybody tuning in Thursday, when I, when I get back from NAB, I'm going to try to give you a little run-through tour. I did some time-lapse work over there of what is in uh, South Hall, which has been one of the linchpins of NAB for a long time. That's where the computer companies like Apple and other people originally kind of started pushing uh, the traditional broadcast mm. people as we digitized everything and the computer companies started to play as big a role as the regular traditional broadcasters. So it's just part of what's happened over the course of time. Yeah. Hey, Bill, Bill, Bill um, oh. Alex was saying that um, the uh, there was a, some of the things that were traditionally outside, like some of the um, sat trucks and OB trucks, he, he saw a bit more inside. Has it, but is there still like I remember seeing helicopters and and all sorts of things outside? Is is there still that? Not really this year. Here's the thing: they used to be on a walkway, and in fact, down here at the end of Central Hall, there's a big double set of doors. And for many years, it was way out over there. There was a pathway through the entire show through this Central Hall, and those sat trucks. And when drones first hit NAB, there were lots of drone vendors along there. The outdoor stuff is now given over to food trucks. I mean, <laughs> they have to feed people here. The food truck lines have been exceptionally long. And for those of us who are trying to cover the show, it's a bit hard to get a bite to eat between things. Uh, very long lines and very long waits for your taco if that's where you're going. The food trucks are nice, but that's in that area 
where we used to have tons and tons of other smaller exhibits. Bill, how are the know, crowds? Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Sure. Go, 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 go ahead, Courtney. Uh, how are the crowds there? They seem pretty sparse there in the Central Hall. I know you've been there for a number of years. How are they compared to the pre-pandemic levels? Are they a lot less, a lot more? More concentrated. Yeah, on on Saturday or on Sunday when we first got here, it was really busy. Monday, the first day of the main show, also very very busy. Uh, it has slowed down a little bit, and of course, the last day of the show is only a half day. That's always been true. The show used to run from uh, Monday to f Thursday. And Thursday, starting about now, somewhere around noon to 2 o'clock, everybody's kind of starting to wrap things up. They're starting to get their stuff into uh, packing cases and things like that. So it's, it's quieter always on the last day. I've been surprised, to be honest with you. I thought it was going to be quieter than it is. Uh, the NAB attendance used to be in kind of the heyday when I was coming to cover it, 160, 170, 175,000 people. I understand we're at about 100,000 now, but from last year to this year, watching the office hours coverage, what I've seen is that it is growing again. It seems like a lot of people who are traditional attendees are coming back. Any problem yeah. finding a hotel room? Oops, I'm, I guess, sorry, you had a delay, Courtney, I didn't hear that. I, I said, any problem finding a hotel room at the last minute? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, there's more here. Las Vegas has changed around NAB a lot. Starting when the monorail came in, it was a big change in how people came to the show. It used to be buses and tons of buses, and you would take, it would take you 40 minutes, an hour, to get from your hotel to the show. Now, if you're lucky enough to stay in one of the hotels that are adjacent to the monorail, you can literally get over here in five or 10 minutes every day. So it cuts a lot of walking and a lot of hassle. So props to Las Vegas for understanding they had this huge economic engine called NAB and maximizing the process and making it as easy as possible for everyone. Yeah. You know, uh, it strikes me as, we, as we've just panned around a little bit, how many of the booths that we have been to, right? Like we, we had, we can see Godox there, and obviously just behind us we, we, would be um, OC. And then I saw um, Core. Um, I, I will never forget Atlas. Um, that that was a, a memorable experience. <laughs> <clears throat> um, For me and, too. <laughs> Yeah, and so, but it, it's interesting just seeing all the uh, some of the names that we've seen that we we really have got around to quite a lot of those booths. Yeah, in this area, and, and again, you know, this is our first foray into this. We had a coverage area. We kept trying to expand it, position of antenna and raising. And I think anybody who's ever been to a major trade show knows you're dealing with a big ex exhibition process and to get something like, can we put something up 40 feet is a very complicated process. Uh, we have raised our antenna a little bit. We've got more coverage. We would lo I would love to be able to go to 50 things that I've seen around the outside of this show, but we just can't reach them this year for the, the limitations of the way this building is. And as I mentioned before, if you're next to something with a big LED volume and all those LED screens, I understand that that kind of scrambles our connection if it's line of sight between our transmitters and the receivers. So we have limitations. We're just learning to live with them and deal with them. Next that year, we sense. need a little blimp that says office hours on it that you raise up full of helium, you raise the receiver up to the top of the uh, <laughs> top of the hall, and we should have a much better coverage. Around. I'm going to whisper, it's actually higher than it's supposed to be right now. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Bill, Bill, just tell, tell us what the experience is like for you now talking to us. If we're thinking about, like, I, f I feel like we're taking it for granted a little bit that you're seeing us, you're hearing us. I feel like we're having a conversation that's very low latent. Um, and Like, it's, it's amazing. What is it like for you as you're talking to us? transformative. I will tell you that the people who, some people don't understand what we're doing. They think we're just another live crew going either live to tape or maybe there's a connection to a satellite truck. They do not understand this idea of a live conversation 
from you guys all over the world. I mean, this is old hand for all of us because we've been doing it every morning for 1,400 and some odd shows. For them, they haven't made the connection yet that this is possible. What you've been seeing, which is essentially live interview after live interview on the web in real time from the floor of a trade show where the global audience can ask instantaneous questions of the experts in the booth, that is a, to my thinking, transformative potential experience. The people who get it, and I can't mention some of the company names, but I have had friends from large and medium-sized companies, and they've come over and they've seen me doing this, or they've seen one of the other hits, they've seen Alex on the show floor, and they get it, go, you're really doing that? Yes, Office Hours is live on the floor at NAB with all the back end, Mukana, the ability for the panelists to interact with the camera in the field. All of that is happening in real time and they go, wow. It's, uh, for those who know, it's making an impression. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, um, <clears throat> I don't know if we, if the TD is listening to us, but I do see that the live view is on now and we're just walking past Black Magic. It would be great to cut to that if we could. It'll be shaky, <laughs> that's fine. People won't care that it's shaky. Um, so we're just seeing now the, the, the Black Magic booth. They've just got into the, um, the central hole, right? Um, is where yeah, they. That's a they football be. field length right there by itself. Right there. That's yeah. a huge booth. Uh, that is a huge booth. You have no idea. Yeah. When, when I took the walk yesterday, I decided to do South Hall top and bottom. It was 20 minutes out of my life. <laughs> it's a right. big, big thing. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So we're um, we're going to be cutting back to Alex um, sometime soon. Um, we're going to get to live view um, because we want to be able to chat to them. Um, <clears throat> but we're um, but they they're making their way there. So that's why I just saw them walk past Black Magic. I wanted to uh, to talk about that. So um, <clears throat> so what what happens next, uh, Bill? You've you've got to start packing down the booth. You got to help them get all that down. Yeah, and let me make just a moment's thing to the to the yeoman work, the incredible work this Office Hours team has done in terms of building a giant operation, getting a thousand wires connected just right. Our partners at Zoom, Andy Carluccio, who's been over making things happen, uh, friends, and I, I, I walked in. And I think I saw a crew of about 15 or 20 people all working hard to try to make this a real thing. And there was a lot of, oh my gosh, look at, look at the, the issue with this in terms of signal or something. I mean, this is one of the most RF and signal rich environments on the planet right now. This is NAB. Right. Every wireless mic thing, every wireless video transmitter company, every company is here all fighting for bandwidth at the same time. And so our team <laughs> managed to do this. And to the best of, my, I, the best of my knowledge, nobody else has managed to do this before. Yes, there are limitations still. We'll be working on those as time goes by to extend our coverage to the whole halls. But I'm very proud of this team from the top to the bottom. Uh, at the credits of the end, Brian and everybody who's been involved in doing it. I, I shouldn't actually say any names because there's so many people who have been it's so critical to this operation. All of you mm -hmm. on the panel making this possible. The tech team behind the scenes, our reporters doing coverage. And look at how many people have stepped up. I mean, we've had probably five or six. Unbelievable effort here to help bring NAB to you guys in real time. Yeah, it, it really is impressive. And even you talking about, you know, fighting to get a taco and, and, and what you, what you have to do on site, you know, it's not as, it's not as hard, hard for us sitting at home. You know, we get this, we, the hardest thing we have is, is our bottoms going numb as we sit here for a while. That's, that's very different to your feet going numb We're live and, right and now, going so hungry. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, I'm hey, sorry. Hey. I, I think I think poor Tenzin here who's on camera is is running a little bit <laughs> a little bit tired and I think there may be a battery we, swap in our near future. We're gonna we're just gonna keep going because I know Alex is gonna be set up in the South Hall in just a minute and uh, yeah, we wanna go live there, so it's not long. We, That's okay, Bill. We'll we'll let you go. Uh, we'll let you go oh. and, we'll, and I wanna check in with the panel here a little bit. So um, I wanted you, you uh, can, 
Sorry, I wanted Bill yeah. to turn around and show us our booth from outside the booth. We've seen it only from the inside of the booth. Uh, we we'd have to come on. Let's booth. just go for it. We're okay. we're behind a post over here. We have no relationship whatsoever with the giant pizza people. But there's our booth back in the back. We've been pretty close here. Um, let's just keep going, and we'll kind of dock back home, and then we'll get That's out good. of we here. That's good. We can see it there. Yeah. Let me. Can you see it there? Uh, yeah. You have no idea the rest of the tech stack in there and what's happening. It's been an unbelievable operation. You can see the little theater thing what we have here and then all sorts okay. of switching gear and other things. And, and they've been working who, who, who magic those, here to make all this happen. Who are those beautiful looking people on that screen there? They, they look they look. Amazing. <laughs> we have to make a thumb there now, so we have to wave to <laughs> we, ourselves. We can wave to ourselves, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's cool. All right. Oh, First time we have, so yeah, that's that's been home base. <laughs> Here's the table where you've been seeing all the interviews coming from the big Zoom wall up here. And in fact, this might be some video feedback because you guys are all on it right now. So who oh, knows? We're it. gonna you know, what it is is what it is. So Bill, Bill, so this we is have what got we've Alex been operating out of in our oh Alex, Thank they're great, excellent, excellent. We've we've got Alex. Thank you, Bill. Um, we're gonna go and we're gonna so, talk about live view. Take it away, Alex. Hey, thanks, Grant. And uh, we are here at Live View, and I'm here with Steve Wind. Uh, that is Steve Wind Mosley uh, from from Live View. And what's what is new here at Live View this this well, year? Well, it's great to be here. Thanks for dropping by, Alex. Real quick, because I know you guys haven't got a lot of time. So the Live View ecosystem is the thing that we've been talking about this time around. Right. So what is the Live View ecosystem? It's an end-to-end -end interoperable uh, workflow system that takes you from contribution through production and into distribution. So contribution, we've got a, a Live View backpack on the back of this camera, which is how we're going live right now. So yep. that's bonded cellular. So bonded Bonded cellular, the secret source there is, of course, LRT. Right. That's Live View Reliable Transport. And how is that different from SRT? Thank you. So SRT, NDI, all designed to transport compressed video over a wired network. LRT is the only and first, original and best, uh, video transport designed for wire-free. Wireless, wire-free connectivity. So cellular, LEO, and LTE. Uh, and private LTE, private 5G, uh, is great. So what built in there is a very complex set of error correction algorithms. Right. And what we're trying to do, as you know, is take thin pipes and bond them together so that we take lots and lots of connection legs, bond them together in real time, and then reassemble them either on a rack-mounted server or in the cloud. So this year, we've just launched our cloud channels in the Amazon marketplace. So full SaaS service, super easy for customers to go from ground to cloud reliably and in high quality. And, and we've been using, I've been using the Live View for over 10 years. Right. So, and, and it is, um, it, it is the, the gold standard you know, for what we're doing. Um, you know, and so, I mean, we've used the, the extenders, we've used the multiple packs, we've used all of those things. Um, and we, uh, as you said, we're coming to, coming to our show from the Fantastic. live view right now. Um, a lot of times people say, well, I can just go get something to bond for me. Yeah, yeah. What's the difference between someone, you building your own little bonded network and a live view? So, uh, we think connectivity is super important, right? So, um, in the way that we've built our software, LRT, to the way that we build our hardware, from the antennae to the, the chipsets uh, and the configuration, it's all designed to do one thing, to take com the content and the, the connectivity and turn it into a valuable part of the ingredient. So, as I said, there's error correction, forward and backward. Uh, so, losing packets and then reassembling is all handled on the fly by LRT. It's hunting the best path to reassemble your video stream in real time. But the key thing about connectivity is uh, Live View generates all across our network. We have 10.5 petabytes of data flowing every month. So we buy a huge amount of data from the networks. So we understand how video and audio needs to traverse over the cellular networks, wherever you are in the world. So remember, you can turn up in 150 countries with your backpack and get connection. However, when the environment is austere, let's put it that way. <laughs> the cell tower is austere, it's at capacity. We're right now, this dog here on its back is running a single SIM card 
provided by Pente, but this is an LU300S, and it's capable from a single SIM card in this environment of streaming a 4K stream, 20 megabits per second, thanks to a private LTE network. And the radio is just over there. And, 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 and describe a private LTE network. So private LTE network, rather than um, us hitting the cell tower, we've sequestered a, a piece of spectrum purely for our own use. Now, it used to be that you'd have to phone ahead in advance, you'd have to speak to the federal uh, agencies and negotiate that for you. Pente have made that super simple, so it's a wrapper. You simply request the spectrum require on the date we require, provision a SIM card for that spectrum, and we can control that all through the live view unit. Right. And, and where are you, so you have, you have, of course, the backpacks, you have the 300, but you also are building this all out into the, into the, web, into the cloud. So you talked a little bit about delivering it, but you, it's not just that you're yeah. sending it through the cloud, but you can actually do all the editing there. Absolutely. So um, if you take our uh, uh, product called Live View Ingest, so we've, we've launched Live View Ingest 2.0 because, hey, it's a second iteration. Right. What's new is that we have a DVR in the cloud. So everything that's connected to or being streamed from your backpack estate is automatically recorded by Ingest. Now, the cool thing about that is wherever you, your teams are in the world, they right. can log in, it's a simple web-based browser, and begin to click and, and trim the growing files. So if you have a hit at 8 o'clock and you want to produce Sting, anybody in your production team can just go in real quick and grab what they need. Right. Now that's really important because it also means you can select what you push forward into your MAM. So if you don't want everything, you don't want to pay storage for everything, pay for the moments that really matter. Right. Just those. Absolutely. And you can actually, you actually can edit the show as well. So if, I, if I'm sending, yeah. so this, this 800 will yeah. take, I can put four cameras in there, you can. send all of those together, and then I'm able to edit it in the cloud. So that's straight into our products called Live View Studio. So absolutely. So Live View Studio, if you think about it as a, a, a switcher in the cloud, so you can do graphics, so we're integrated with Simply Live, Display, Tagboard, a whole raft of other graphics providers. We have simple transitions and wipes and things, and of course it's hotkey controlled. And the, what we were trying to do there was this concept that we call lightweight production. Right. We want to reduce the number of people you need to deploy to scene, but yep. also reduce the number of people who are actually going to produce the program feed. So Live View Studio, now with SCUDI 35 ad insertion, um, enables, so you can monetize what you're doing, enables you to bring back multiple streams which are time synced, NTP right. style time synced, so super secure, uh, create your show, and either one button, distribute to 30 points of digital distribution, TikTok, Twitch, whatever else, or you, of course you can take an SDI you feed out. TikTok, Twitch, all, yeah. I got a 16 by nine, I got nine by 16. How you, do, how you can do have different that? profiles that you wish to set up. And those are all set up in the, in the editor, so yeah. I have the feeds coming in. You can indeed do that. So yeah. a bit of pre-configuration, you can have different menus and mixes, formats and resolutions. And of course, when you think about that, you can also add in um, oh, we've got some stuff going on in back. You can also add in simple uh, voice overlays, so you could have your commentary happening in different languages, but the same program. Wow. Okay, so it's pretty cool. And then, of course, if you want to bring in a remote guest, shoot them a QR code. Right? If they've got a smartphone and they can use the Live View app, they can no. Oh, it's no. not an app. If they've got a smartphone and they can connect to the internet and they can receive an email, you've got everything you need as long as the smartphone's got a camera, to bring them right into your show. You can tally them, they can get a now, now, and, video and return. Web, when you said not an app, it's over Web a WebRTC. WebRTC. Straight into studio natively. And, so, what's the, and what's the latency on that? Uh, depending on what you're running at the show app, but it's, um, it's sort of sub sort of 600 milliseconds. Wow. It's, it's not unheard of. So you can have a real conversation with your contributing expert or guest right in your show. And of course, you can bring in lower thirds. Now, the thing I must talk to you about before yeah. you go yeah. is this concept of story centricity. Mm -hmm. So it's the elections. You've heard that lots of times, right? But it's also a massive year for sport. So there are crews, one of our customers is deploying 28 crews to the Olympics. Right. And they're all catching slugs and bringing it back. Now, obviously, sharing stuff in the moment, in live, is fantastic. But to truly monetize that content, what do they want to do? They want to repurpose that content. Right. Which means the editorial team have got to be able to find it. Right. 
And the camera crews have got to be able to work on the right, right story at the right time. Right. So story centricity enables us to integrate with the control center, NRCSs, people like Dina, uh, WolfTech, those type of folk, and take the metadata from the point of ingest all the way through to man, to the point of outplay. So that human error is reduced, if you call a story a story, assign a unit to the story, it flows through the process. Right. Right? So reducing error, but also making it much easier to find that story and repurpose. And for so many of those things, especially with sports, it's yeah. worthless 24 hours later. I mean, you've got yeah. to turn this over a quick, you know, quick Absolutely. Make sure it's it's got to be on the moment. But 48 hours later, when you want to have that replay highlight, where was that? What sting was it? What camera crew was it? No one's changed the, the taxonomy and the schema. Straight in, find it, take it to air. That's fantastic. It's pretty powerful. So it's an end-to-end -end system, but it's an end-to-end -end system which is enabled by the fact that we spend a lot of time working with best-of-breed suppliers. People like Dean and Amir, AWS. Interoperability is right. really the thing that I think as providers, right. we owe it to our customers to do one thing make the easy button really big for them to press. Now, they want to tell stories, they want to save lives with their public safety. What they don't want to do is spend hours configuring. Yep. So our job is to try and make it as easy as possible That's and fantastic. as reliable as possible. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let me see if there's any questions on, uh, coming in from our uh, viewing audience. We're streaming, of course, live. To, this is LRD, by the way, Live View Reliable Dog. Are you going to say hi? There we go. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Steve, thank you so much. Thanks thank for your you, time. Thank you for your time. Oh, <laughs> Don't we lost them. <laughs> Very good. Back to you, Grant. Thanks, Sam. Awesome. So good. I, it, you know, it's, what's been so amazing is to hear the different companies. There's a bit of overlap, um, but each company has a different approach to, to doing some of these things. Um, Alex, are you, are you are you still there? You're, you're stepping out of the booth a little bit. I think we're starting to wrap up the show for the whole, the whole show. Yeah, great. A little bit, if you'd like. Take the dog um, with show you. you. There were, we're in the South Hall. We didn't take the dog with me. He's not chasing me. Uh, he's um, and uh, so here's. This is the South Hall, and we uh, we have the live view. But there's a lot of you know. This is what's funny is the South Hall. I got really turned around because there's an escalator there that used to be in the middle of the South Hall, but but the rest of it's under construction at the moment. And so I kept on trying to figure out where the escalator was and realized that. Half of it's gone. Um, we did run into uh, Emery Wells on the way th on the way in, so I didn't. We <laughs> should have been streaming then. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, but Emery uh, is. I think he's going to come on and talk talk to us a little bit about the new Frame IO. Uh, so we talked a little bit with him on the way here. That's what we got a little delayed talking to Emery about uh, the new release, which just sound. I didn't realize how big the release is. Basically, you can manage an entire film project inside a frame. So that was a pretty exciting little little discussion that we had on the way here. Um, and uh, but here we'll, we'll walk around a little bit here and and uh, hey, um, you know Alex, these are, you're, uh, we yeah, saw ahead, when you walked in, you went you went past um, Black Magic and we and 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 I um, I sneakily cut live. We we cut live as you walked past Black Magic. Um, and uh, oh, great. I, I, it was a bit of a hike, you, I think, back you see there. Dan there, I saw Dan. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, right. And, Dan and, May was there. And there's also yeah, yeah. There's also also Ross as well. Is is just across from we we didn't see it, but we're super interested in the think, Ross yes. um, announcements and stuff too. But there's lots, isn't there? We're yeah. going to miss a lot. I, mean, I know. <laughs> we're going to miss a lot. You know, the thing is, is that this year we this year we were like, can we do all of this? And we just barely did. <laughs> I mean, it turned out to be a great show. And we, but it was a lot of, you know, figuring a lot of things out. There's a whole lot of things, if you watch, that we just had never done before, and no one's ever done before. I mean, if you look at the, what you were doing just before you jumped to this, the live view thing we've done before, but the, the vendor's talking straight to, to you, uh, the Unreal Engine with, with Zoom, um, you know, going straight to you, that's all brand new. And figuring it all out took a little bit of time, and we are um, so excited. And there's a lot of people, the booth just, you know, it was a little booth hidden off in the corner and people were just coming by all week. So we're really excited about what, what this looks like next year, um, but also what it looks like in the next couple events. We have, we already have events stacking up and um, so there's a lot of interest and I think it's going to be really interesting.
It's so good. Um, to that point, we want to thank Zoom um, as our connection partner that really made that work. It was so good talking to Andy yesterday and just hearing kind yeah. of the, the strategic plan. They were proactive in wanting to work with a partner and get behind it and help it, um, at, which worked great for us at Office Hours, but they provided the bandwidth for us as well as a whole bunch of these new products that they've got with the, uh, the uh, new release of Zoom ISO, but then we got a glimpse of, of Zoom tiles, which looks really cool, being able to do the gallery views and, and cut all that in. Yeah. And then, of course, sitting, we saw a screen. Uh, Bill took, it, took us back to the booth and we just saw that the screen with our faces on it, but the, is using Unreal Engine and the Zoom plugin for Unreal Engine to be able to bring in um, the the live views of from Zoom, which is just amazing. So, this, uh, at, to your point, Alex, a lot of things are for the first time and are are really game changing yeah. for us. And, and I just have to say, what a pleasure to work with a team that, that you know, both the team offsite but also the incredible team that we had on site. It was the right people at the right time. They just kept showing up, gluing things together. I mean, I can't list off everybody, but it was just really such a pleasure. I'm so grateful for the 20 plus people that showed up to support us, um, the, the vendors. So, you know, Vizlink giving us the, the wireless trans, transmitter, of course. LiveView and Electrosonic have been long time uh, supporters of us, um, making sure that we had the hardware that we needed. Sony giving us these incredible cameras <laughs> that made this all work. Zoom, of course, with the, with the connections. Nanlite gave us uh, some, uh, some lights to work with for the booth. Um, you know, so we've had just so many people supporting what, we've done, what we're doing. And you know, it, just, it couldn't have been done without all of them. And I think it helped us really take the show to another level. A year ago, uh, we, I think we kind of did an hour or two of streaming. Um, you know, we've generally had these little one to three hour streams. We were streaming three hours every day. Uh, our goal next year is to stream all day, every day, um, throughout NAB, and I think any, I think folks here would like us to do that. <laughs> so, so I think that we're really excited about what this looks like. Our next show will be, uh, um, our next show will be Cinegear. Uh, that will be really a 4K HDR 5.1 test. So the whole show will will be pushing that envelope instead of some of the envelopes we pushed here, and then we're probably going to Seagraph. It's so good, Alex. So, you know, we. We've wanted to thank people along the way, and at the at the end, we're we're, we're starting to wrap up, and we'll get to see the names of all the people um, that have that have worked behind this. But I mean, I just wanted to say a special thank you to you, Alex, because you've been talking for you know over the four years that we've been we've been working through these things. You're always pushing the envelope. You're always saying, "Well, what if we could do this? And if we could just get a booth that would be base, and that would give us some good bandwidth, and then we could do things from that." And you kept kind of spearheading that and have kind of been a, 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 a thought leader as well as actually practically making it happen. And so um, I just, just well, want to thank I, you I, for, for leading us in that way. Well, and, and, and I just want to underline that we can't get this done. You know, I had ideas of what I wanted to do, but it can't be done with all the ideas and all of the logistics and all the infrastructure and all of the everything else that's been done by this huge team. Like I can have, you can have, you know, an idea is cheap. Um, you know, the getting it done is the hard part. And we really are uh, an incredible community that has done this. All of you that are on the panel, um, you, know, you know, JJ and Mickey and Jonas that are in the back end making this work, um, the, the, you know, um, uh, Brian Shan <laughs> dealing with me, Greg. You know, there's so many people. And Raj, you know, who's usually on the ground with us, helping us work out all the stuff that's going on here. You know, but then there's just, you know, um, you know, Edwin here has been a tank, you know, with the, you know sh shooting this stuff, uh, you know, and, and there's been so many people that have made such a huge difference. And so I have this dream, but that dream was completely impossible without the community. Like without everyone that's been involved, without everyone watching, asking questions, without, um, you know, without Laura managing the, the, the questions on, on her end, without um, all of these people, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop naming names because there's so many people I can't even get to them. But it is, we're doing this. Like I, have an, I had an idea and I have to say that what I really wanted to do is find a new way to cover events. And so what looked very chaotic was me going, I want to find this thing. I don't know where it is, but we're going to keep on doing different things until we find, find something that kind of creates a pattern that we think we can do over and over again that's scalable. And I think we found it. 
Like I think we, we have found a new way to cover these events that is far more, uh, I think, visceral, far more connected than I've ever than I've ever worked on an event, and I've been doing this for, you know, 30 years. And so, but it took it took all of us working on it. It took a lot of experimentation. It took a lot of effort. It took a lot of headaches to get that done, and it took by a lot of people. And I just really appreciate, you know, all of the support that we've gotten over the last two years as we figured this out. Yeah, well, one of the things that I know you get is the idea that an event is just a dead end. A one-off event is a dead end. But what we're doing is iteration. Um, you get that better than yeah. probably anyone because you were like, I can't just do a show weekly or monthly. That's got to be daily. <laughs> and the right. daily iteration yeah. of the show has, what, has, has advanced it so quickly. And straight away, you're talking yeah. about iteration because you're saying about cine gear and you're saying, okay, the next thing is cine gear. We've got a room for improvement document that, we've, that we're making lots of notes. And then we roll into the next one and that's the next iteration. You know, and the thing is, is that one of the things I was talking about today, you know, a lot of times you think of new ideas, you think of things that you want to do, and you want to do it incrementally. But the problem with increments, you know, is that it's kind of like cooking. You can't cook something halfway. A steak cooked halfway is not edible. You know, and so the, and so the um, uh, well, I mean, it's edible if you like tartar, <laughs> but, but, it's, but generally not edible. And so the, the issue is, is that, is that you, um, that, you have to get all the ingredients together. And so what we've been doing is kind of making this plate in a couple different ways, you know, and trying to, trying to find all of that and, and iterate and iterate and iterate. But the, the, the danger is, is that if you give up too quickly, you, you, you start to pour concrete into something and now it's just back to the old way of doing it. And I think we've moved past that. And, I, and it, the reason I say that is in, when you look at um, the booth, what makes the booth work is all of you looking as good as you do. So the fact that we, that we, these ruthless reviews and all the other bits and pieces that we've done and all the hard work that the panelists have, have, have made has shown off because now we put this incredible Unreal Engine and Zoom onto the, onto the booth and people come by and look at it. If everyone was on, their, was on their internal camera with their internal mics, this would not work. Like it would not be sustainable. So anyway, that's, that we're just, so all of those pieces had to be put together and now all the pieces I think are very close together. We'll continue to iterate, but this fast, crazy iteration, I think is, is gonna level off a little bit and we just start working on quality and logistics. Yeah, it's definitely a spirit of excellence along with iteration. Um, if it's just just doing the next thing, that's not enough. It's got to be excellent. It's making yep. it better and better each time. What are the things that we can do? And what's important, though, I think for your team, the team that's on site there, is definitely the high fives. Like they, they really need to be at this point as we're closing up big high fives, big pats on the back. It, it was uh, an amazing effort and it really, really worked. Thanks. And thank you again. <laughs> no worries. Thanks, Alex. All right. We're going we're gonna to finish it up. I um, just want to say thank you to the panel. Um, it's been a great journey. Um, and, uh, you know, we could thank people all the time. What we're going to do um, is we're going to start looking at the, the names here um, of all the people um, that, that have worked on the show. Um, and, uh, and really, we just want to say thank you. And of course, we're going to do a couple of um, shows, I'm sure, some second hours breaking down what we're doing here and how it all worked, and then talking about how we're going to do it differently or better or, you know, the 4K and, and, uh, and Atmos um, at Cine Gear sounds really exciting as well. So thanks all for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Pacific. As with every day, you can join us in the daily show of Office Hours, Office Hours. Dot global. Thanks, everyone.